Okay, Davila, try to guess. Yeah, I know it's a girl from the moves. I know it's from a girl. That, yeah, that's for sure. <laughs> it can be a boy. <laughs> but um, in the start, after it was just the chaos, uh, I couldn't uh, catch anything. But in the start, I thought it's Joanna. Uh, could it be right? Maria, I think Maria started. Maria Kiseleva. Mm -hmm. Yes, you are right. It's Maria. Oh. So, guys, thank you for a uh, big applause. Uh, it was a real chaos, uh, let's say, in the morning. Maris is writing to me, it's nonsense, and it's nonsense, let's stop. So, thank you for, for pulling it through. So somehow we, we managed to do it. Okay, now my aim will be to present you the program of the visit and how today we will, we will work. So our guests are already with us. Who came also people from our group will be making, uh, will be making presentations. So all eyes on the screen, I have posted a map of Lithuanian youth centers. So the um, Department of Youth Affairs is updating the data each three months months, four months. So the last update is from December 7th. Uh, so last year at the end of the year in Lithuania, we had 45 youth centers, which are green dots on the map. So this is the map of Lithuania, 60 municipalities, and then there are dots and inside the dots, uh, it's written how many youth centers and open youth spaces we have uh, in Lithuania. So 45 youth centers. 75 open youth spaces for mobile youth work this year it will be half of the country also covered uh, who would mobile youth work where mobile youth work activities being done and we have one municipality in blue who do not provide any youth work um, activities but in october last year all municipalities were covered something changed in that municipality and they are they were not uh, they are not doing anymore so with these black circles i am um, circled around the youth centers, the municipalities where they are located. And I will present based on the order how we will make presentations today. So we will be watching videos and we will also give a few minutes for people to speak up and tell their story. So we will start from Ukmerge Youth Center. Daiva and her colleague have joined us to tell a bit about their youth center. And the video of their youth center was shot by their uh, uh, Solidarity Corps uh, volunteer from France. Uh, then we will continue to Polus, to Kupiškis, Kupiškis Youth Center. So Kupiškis, yeah, it looks quite close, but then for me to drive from Vilnius to Kupiškis, it's three hours with the car. So it's not so not so close. Um, in real life, if we would be doing study visits, we would not manage to see to see those places. So Kupiškis, and then we will go as a third uh, to Elektrene, Elektrene Youth Center, and then we have Liepaja. We will have Andris uh, City Mobile Youth Work and Youth Work in Liepaja presentation. So we'll also go to to Latvia to see how youth work is being done. So if to count in kilometers, we would drive today 1,200 kilometers if we would be meeting in, in real life. Uh, two years ago, we were doing a study visit in this part of Lithuania, uh, traveling from Vilnius. So we started at eight o'clock, we left, and we came back at midnight, and we managed to visit three, three, three youth centers. So that's quite sometimes challenging. You have to spend a lot of time, a lot of time on the bus. Okay, so how the day to day will look. So today it will be a study visit as a first thing. So four videos, four presentations, and then a discussion till the coffee break. So we plan to manage in one and a half hour to do the visits. And then in the second session, we will talk about steps of establishment of youth centers. So the second part speakers, they had to change their appointments. So we move them mobile youth work and social business to tomorrow. So as we were sending an email and writing also in, um, in Facebook, program has a bit of change, but that's a normal, normal dynamic. We will still manage to do everything. 
we have uploaded also the short videos on the Facebook event. So we will try to screen it to show to all of you together um, those videos. If not, it will be possible to find the videos and watch personally if the connection, uh, trans uh, transatlantic connection will not hold. So the videos will be uh, will be there. And as I said, we will start from Ukmergia, we will start from Daiva and her colleague, three minute video, five minute presentation, few questions to clarify, and then we will go to next presentations. And at the end of the session, we will have a discussion. Mm -hmm. Marius. And you can write those questions and comments uh, to the Facebook ch uh, to chat, to the Zoom chat. So I will be collecting some of them. Okay, very good. And also update from our team. Yesterday's video is already in the Padlet. So you can visit also Padlet and see, see the videos from yesterday program on youth age psychology. Okay. Uh, Mario said that I have to do also a bit of intro into Lithuanian youth work from the from this um, perspective of the history. So if we talk about youth work, there are several important uh, dates. So Lithuania gained independence in the beginning of the 90s. So in the beginning of the 90s, first youth centers were opening next to the church. So there were quite a lot of church youth centers, but then close to the year 2000, the churches, they, how to say, changed their focus more to social services, to children. Um, so really providing food, shelter, and clothing. So they, um, their target group was changing. And then uh, somewhere around 2004, um, one church organization, um, let's say, imported a German methodology co called Open Youth Work in Lithuania. And some publications were released about how to, what is Open Youth Work and how to establish an Open Youth Work. And then in 2006, we started to get state funding for youth centers. So the Department of Youth Affairs, they started to fund youth centers. And this year we are celebrating 15 years of uh, youth work in Lithuania, of state-funded youth work in Lithuania. And in 15 years, uh, we managed to open 45 youth centers. Not all of those youth centers are getting funding from the state. A lot of them are municipal. Some of them were opened by municipalities, others by NGOs. Some of them were renovated by European, Norwegian funding. Uh, so it really, it really depends. So the reality is quite, quite different. What is very important to, to tell, very often youth workers tell well what they are doing, what are their activities, but not so well uh, why they are doing it and what kind of added value they are creating. So sometimes there is this, how, how to say, miscommunication between politicians and decision makers. So telling reasons for activities which you are doing, what kind of interventions you do and what kind of added value you are creating, it is also very, very important. Okay, so I'm removing pin from myself. So now we will go to Ukmergea, one of the oldest uh, towns in Lithuania with some nice industry, nice traditions, and I would say closer to the center of the country. And um, what I like about this youth center, it's really, really huge. So the building which you will see, it's a typical kindergarten building from Soviet times. And in smaller towns where the need for kindergartens is smaller, often the youth centers are being opened in these kind of places. So, and it's, in my opinion, one of the best shapes for, for a youth center. Okay, so I will be start sharing the screen and enjoy.
Okay, so here was the video tour, quite fast one, made by a French volunteer. So, Daiva, where are you? I will pin you and your colleague. So, welcome to our training course. Um, five minutes for you to present, uh, present your youth center, the story, how it is established, how you manage, what do you do? And then we will ask some clarifying, clarifying questions. Hello. Uh, at first, I need to warn you about my motto. Uh, it's uh, uh, my English is your problem. So if you uh, if you want to ask something, so you can write on the on the chat. So um, uh, what was the question? What uh, about the? Establishment. Uh, the center, our center established uh, 13 years ago, and I'm the boss, the big boss of this center uh, is about um, mm -hmm, eight years. Uh, about eight years. And during this time, we did a lot of huge things and projects, and uh, uh, a lot of generations changed each other. Uh, you you can see only one building of, of ours. Uh, we have another small house in the center of, of the city and we work uh, in there with um, what is the name in English? Uh, it's uh, delinq delinquentive. Yeah, with the delinquent uh, kids, they are not uh, very young. Uh, the age uh, is between 12 and uh, now it's uh, on, until 18, 17. But uh, they are the young bad boys. And uh, during one and a half year, uh, we work with them and situation changed. At first I thought uh, they just grow up, but now I need to, I need to confirm the, the, our input and they stopped. Uh, uh, getting involved in criminal uh, activities because yeah. previously uh, they have been getting themselves in trouble uh, we have a lot of cases in court, though they are underage. Um, so uh, because of that reason, uh, this house for them was established uh, to have a place where they could spend their free time. And because of that, um, because of this activity, uh, and this uh, house which they have, uh, they are not getting any more uh, into criminal activity. Not anymore, but no, we can say less. Mm. Yeah. Uh, officially, we don't know any activity that they would have been caught. Mm. Um, so, um, yeah, we don't have official information. Mm. They are still in court for past uh, crimes, but uh, we haven't heard of anything new. So we okay. consider that this project is successful. Mm -hmm. uh, a little bit of foundation about the money. I guess you are interested in, in, in money. <laughs> so we are fund uh, the money we get from uh, city municipality and uh, from uh, what is Department of Youth Affairs? Oh, it's a very strange, very strange name for me. Affair is not is not fair. <laughs> uh, so uh, we are searching a lot of uh, foundations funds uh, because of uh, uh, because of workshops, because of uh, some. Uh, Leisure, leisure activities for young people because uh, municipalities money uh, enough only for uh, buildings uh, 
what is maintenance ah, yeah. and wages. yeah if we want to to buy some uh, paper or uh, pencils we need to to look for another another money to extra money and uh, now we are working with a uh, three or four, four four projects local projects uh, in the old times when we could travel we were very active participants in the, in our foreign partners projects and meetings and uh, trainings and now we're sitting in our city and don't travel and we are very sad about it uh, but uh, what 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 is, I don't know, money yeah. buildings. Uh, we have three buildings in our uh, jurisdiction. <laughs> so we are, uh, we are care about uh, three, two big buildings and one small. And um, we have uh, 13 employees, 13. Uh, I, we are working with, uh, uh, we can stay in in a, at in of uh, three directions. So one one uh, one project one work in he is here in the youth center. Another project with uh, with the mobile work and uh, with the youth space. It's our house. We we call it the house because it's a small old small house, green house. And uh, about the, Ingrid said about the children in, in, in there. So I don't know what to say. What what you can ask? What what you need to to know about about us? At some moment, you were doing some kind of craft workshops with that people were doing something with hands. I remember. The pastures <laughs> potal I I will tell you. Yes. Previously, uh, and the start idea with this house was a bike, bicycle workshop. So these young guys would repair bicycles and uh, they will have a possibility to earn themselves uh, some money. Um, this idea and the project mm -hmm. really didn't go through well because uh, uh, the maintenance tools uh, were missing after some time. Also, uh, the bikes that we brought was uh, used to have fun, uh, even though they weren't really suitable for riding. Uh, these young guys, they found a way to use them, you know. Uh, yeah, it was funny. We saw the videos, how they tried to play basketball with a wheel and uh, yeah, very interesting. Uh, so now we have other idea to make uh, lamps, table lamps from uh, basic, basic, yeah, uh, secondhand stuff. Uh, because uh, you don't need to buy a lot of parts, a lot of tools to do that. You can make a lamp out of really basic things. So we are going to try to Im implement this with these young guys. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, to repair bikes, uh, I suppose you need uh, a good environment in town, so many people use them. At the moment in Ukmerge, we don't have it. There are not uh, many possible clients for this. Uh, that's why this project got a little bit uh, forgotten. And we use taxi, not bikes. And cars. And foot. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay, maybe, guys, you have some questions. You want to find out two, three things to clarify about the activities of the center. You can write it into the chat also. I have a question. Uh-huh. So, uh, 
what was the most difficult uh, thing that you faced in the beginning when you start to build the, the youth center? For you, for yourself, what was the most difficult thing that you had to face? Paperwork. Paperwork, bureaucracy. A lot of reports, a lot of, uh, a lot of different reports, a lot of uh, agreements. Um, okay. it's, it's a, a huge paperwork. In the, in the year here. Ingrid is a youth worker, so I'm an administrator and I, I, I usually work with the papers and Ingrid is the, the person who uh, directly work with, the, with the, our visitors. So what was the difficulty? Um, um, for myself as a youth worker, I think the most difficult uh, thing is, uh, I agree, uh, paperwork. That's why I'm a youth worker. I like this informal environment I work in. And uh, I enjoy more creative work and organizing events. Um, uh, Idea, ideas processing and inventing some of the ideas. Um, also, the other most difficult thing is um, to balance uh, preventative work with a friendship of young people. Yeah, I think that's about it. Otherwise, I really enjoy this work. Um, I really have a lot of space to um, express in many different ways and involve young guys into this field. Uh, my question you have this third building uh, as an, and as i remember it's a place to organize events uh, which you got last year camps. these camps campsite it's very it's very new it's very new now we're on a, in a create creation creativity protest so now we are just searching what the possibilities to to use this to use this building now we are working with the renters, yeah? Uh, so we're renting some places, no? Renting, no, yes, normal. Are... Mm -hmm. it's, it's rented rented out. Okay, yeah, but in the future, it will be a place for youth exchanges, training courses and other stuff. And that's also a part of the municipality owned property, which you are managing. Yep. Yes, as I know. Okay, we have... Uh, how can you earn money to support the activities? Uh, for earning the money, I will leave the question further for discussion. Also, there is a question about rules in youth center. So it will be nice to hear four different perspectives about, about the rules. So ladies, thank you very much um, for your short inputs. Uh, please don't go away and listen to other presentations and then we will invite you to the discussion. Okay, and now we will go to Paulus Youth Center to Kupishkis. So Kupishkis, uh, myself, I haven't been to Kupishkis, so it's interesting also for me to see. Okay, I hope you are ready. So the video is here and let's watch. <laughs>
Okay, Paulus, where are you? Where is Here, you? next to monitor, yeah. So, okay. hello I one more time, guys. You? So, because I'm alone and uh, I'm a man, so I will, will be quickly, I guess. So, because my English, just like a dog barking, you know, everybody's hear it, but nobody's understand, so. I'm just write a few sentences so I can read it slowly. It looks longer text. So, Kupishka's youth center previously, where was a cinema? So, we have a big screen in the center. You, you see it. So, we use it for the movies and the play video games. It's like PC4. In the same space, we have a mountain climbing wall. It's eight meters high, so people can spend a short or maybe long time <laughs> if I don't see it. So with the problem is that where is, so where is no heating, so activities can be only during the warm season. Okay, we have three rooms on the second floor, but uh, where is also no heating. Whereas so we usually downstairs. And here we have two cabinets and two spaces where activities usually take. Of course, how about our center? Our center has four informal groups. Uh, you see in the, in the video. So fire jungles, DJs, girls group Gamma. It's like a, a girls volunteers team. So something like that. And the last one is volunteers. So we also provide non-formal education and mobile work. In the mobile work, uh, we just in the second years and it's very difficult to keep young people when activities is online, of course. Okay, so the youth center has been working for 13 years and is being renovated from outside. Uh, but this pandemic inspired me uh, to start constructions from the inside. And I think, and I hope this will be not a reason why young people why not come in when we will see it, no. So we hoping that COVID uh, ends soon as possible and we will be all uh, we will able to work with young people normally because at work is not only difficult to get them interested, but also to attract new young people. And without youth, this is just old cinema building with Soviet Union smell. So, yeah, I, Paul, I, I, think, yeah, I think to make a video, but you know, we have a lot of mess around. So if you want it, I can show it a little short tour with webcam. <laughs> If you want it. Yes, please. Okay. So, yeah, this is uh, our director cabinet. This uh, big idea, ideas come from. Yeah, it looks like we work here. Yeah. So, next. This is big. Yeah. So this is the place where I spent youth. Yeah. Now we have uh, white walls like in the hospital, but maybe we'll change it. We try to make the clouds. I'll try, but you know. So for the last job, I trying to kick out this Soviet Union door. Uh, but it's very strong, so I need more time. So this is our amazing kitchen. Yes, and now beautiful. You went to the router, most probably. <laughs> yes. <laughs> desk.
Ja, nu er det så sauer klinner. Det er lessig, hei. Ja, det er det alle. Ja, and we <coughs> just a little bit of the renovation of the waste room. And a beautiful view. Gothic style church. You can visit when you will be here. So, enough, I guess enough. Okay, people, questions to Paulus. Paulus, I want to thank you very much that you have prepared a paper presentation. It was very clear. So, guys, uh, what is interesting for you to find out about the former cinema? Yeah, everything was very clear. So, Paulus, you are saying that, you know, rooms are being renovated. So what will be in those rooms which are being renovated now? Just area for the youth, just, but I want to make it new, you know, after pandemic, uh, new inspiration for the youth and us, of course. So, uh, people are asking, how will you do, how are you working in winter time when it's cold? Area when this rooms and first floor uh, is we have heating, so we don't use it uh, the that area where is the mountain climb and second floor. So we spend time in the first floor, the small rooms. Yeah. Uh, people were asking, how did you get the cinema for youth center? Yeah, uh, when I so I say it. It's the old building, it's built, I guess, in 1950s, and it was a cinema in the Soviet Union, so uh, it, it's what left the old walls and this big screen. Mm -hmm. uh, and if I remember correct, you are a municipal youth center, so you yeah, are yeah, on municipality, yeah. so you get also funding from the municipality. And also from the same state level funding from this uh, Yotter, the Department of Youth Affairs as the previous uh, center. Yes, correct. Mm -hmm. uh, what is the age of young people who are coming? To uh, just like always, I guess, from the 14 to the 18, 19, something like that. <clears throat> okay. Super. So, Paulus, thank you very much. Uh, don't run away. We will give you questions all together. Okay. Uh, now we will go to Electriene. So, the youth center uh, where Barbara, Asta, and Aurelia um, are working. And myself, I'm also bringing guests from time to time. So, it will be a bit longer, eight minute video of Electriene, uh, Electriene town. A second youngest town in Lithuania, which is it will celebrate 60 years soon. Uh, built, we'll see. Mm -hmm. Some problems with my sharing. Uh, sorry. Yeah, the city was built, it's quite new, second youngest city built next to a power plant and typical Soviet architecture. But on the positive hand, there is a very a lot of infrastructure, ice skating ring. Um, there is a pool for a town of twelve thousand people. That's quite a lot. Okay. We will see. So an essential thing for each youth center is a separate entrance. So in Electriana Youth Center, the separate entrance is in the inner yard of the cultural center. So it makes uh, a nice access for young people. And also we have a big uh, inner yard, which we can use for activities in summertime to organize concerts, events, barbecue events, uh, discos, uh, which attract uh, young people a lot. So I want to welcome you 
to the building to explore how the 200 square meter youth center looks like from inside. center is saying hello to everyone. My name is Asta. I'm a new girl here. I'm really excited to be here and to tell you that our Electriana Youth Center was created three years ago and uh, teenagers, uh, youngsters can come here six days per week and have just a good time. Starting from just sitting and looking at the one point and in this ceiling or somewhere else, just relaxing. Um, what do we do here? So we do a lot here. We talk, we sing, we dance, and my colleague Christina will tell you more about our activities in this electrical like, you know, use. We have uh, this pool, pool game video games, uh, tennis games, football table games and other things uh, we can do here. Uh, now I want to say that my colleague Barbara uh, talked to you about mobile work. Hello, I am mobile youth worker Barbara Gutauskina and I work in Electriani Youth Center. And also, we in Electrian Youth Center have a mobile work uh, with youngsters. Uh, that means that we uh, go uh, at six uh, communities and then uh, we have activities. And, uh, that work uh, means that uh, we go with two workers, uh, two mobile workers, and there uh, we work in. Uh, some place in one while good work uh, came uh, youngsters uh, and came at uh, 10 to 20 youngsters this is the place where uh, where are we developing projects and having the uh, individual consultations. So youngsters can come here and we can talk individually and solve their problems. So we have computer, we have desk, we have paper and we have um, attention, all the attention to the youngsters. So this is the building of Electriana Cultural Center and also the building of the library. So the building was renovated in the year 2000 and it accommodates uh, the main cultural activities of this small town of Elektriene. So there are five spaces uh, designated for young people and then also a huge stage uh, for cultural activities, movie screaming, concerts. So a lot of cultural life is happening here in this building. So let's enter. So uh, on the right hand side, here is the entrance to the library uh, where librarians are working with the community and young people and on the left side, this is the entrance to the cultural center and the hall in the middle is also used for cultural activities, socializing and also and so it's a nice place for young people, uh, for senior citizens to hang out, have conversations, drink a cup of coffee when they enter cultural activities. So let's continue. Uh, one of the 
functions which the cultural center is providing. It's a tourism information and business information point, a center. So when the COVID situation is not happening, uh, we have an informational officer here meeting tourists, meeting uh, people living in the town, and also providing information about tourist activities and uh, business opportunities in the municipality. So in this room, youth work in the cultural center has started. Previously, it was a small rehearsal room with 60 square meters, but uh, 12 years ago, um, the director decided to open a youth space, a youth space for youth work. And for approximately eight years, uh, youth work activities were happening in this room. And then we opened the youth center in the basement. And two years ago, the young people, the young leaders, uh, youth leaders, uh, they said that for them it's not enough space in the youth center uh, because all the young people from the Tama are coming. So they decided that they would like to have a co-working space where they could meet, organize educational activities, uh, where NGOs could have an office. So they found private uh, funders, private company, who gave them financial support to renovate this room and now it's called the Youth Bureau. So where young people, um, pupil organizations um, come here to develop their projects, their activities. So this is an additional service which now the cultural center is providing. So this is a children's space, we call it the V space. And this space is used for pupils from the first, second, third grade who after school are coming here for leisure activities till their parents are working. Also this room is being used for birthday celebrations of children. So this is like a social enterprise of the cultural center which provides us opportunity to earn a bit of additional money. Also, in this space, the volunteers from the youth center are coming to help to work with children. So that this is their volunteering activity place, uh, which they're doing. So this space is created only a year ago, but it's quite popular with small children who come uh, for these activities after school. Okay, thank you very much for watching the video. So Aurelia and Barbara, the stage is yours. I know that you have prepared the presentation. Yes, now we want to show you the our presentation. Please enjoy. And Barbara can start now. Yes, about our work in Electrani Youth Center, because you see the place, uh, only place, only uh, building uh, without teenagers. And this is difficult to understand uh, uh, who uh, are in there, where are uh, many of the uh, youngsters uh, and who we can do in there. Uh, so uh, uh, not in pandemic time, we can uh, work, we work in uh, six days, like Anastasia says, so, uh, 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 at uh, three to the eight uh, uh, p.m. and uh, an open youth center can go uh, uh, from uh, 40 to 20, nine years old uh, teenage uh, youngsters and uh, now uh, in quarantine uh, we are doing uh, online work uh, two times in week and uh, one uh, uh, one group can go uh, in our center uh, when they register and uh, one time in week uh, we can uh, see this in we can we can see the real 
uh, and do the real work now. Okay. Thank you. And this is our rules. Uh, and uh, uh, at youth center, we feel like at home and everything uh, we're doing, uh, we're doing uh, ourselves. And uh, we are ourselves in cleaning and uh, uh, prepare our um, place. We see youngsters and what we cleaning. <laughs> okay. And we have a contract with food uh, charity organization and the uh, donating uh, food for every who comes to youth center uh, can uh, use this food uh, and uh, this help uh, to learn about uh, don't waste food and uh, how cooking <laughs> and use this. A lot of activity are with cooking with food because youngsters uh, love it. And uh, young people create the atmosphere from, from themselves. And uh, in 2020, we have uh, a mini project when we uh, uh, use uh, and uh, um, use the school uh, uh, teenagers and they uh, can help us uh, uh, to reno mini uh, cosmetic renovating uh, our youth center. Uh, uh, we, uh, we give the social, social uh, hours and uh, they help us. And the youth center offers you the online digital activities and meetings, individual uh, consultations and emotional support, uh, psychologist consultation, um, information about tobacco, electronic cigarettes, drugs, alcohol, and harmful addictions, uh, volunteering taught warriors programs and classes and activities on personal development career planning. If necessary, we apply an intervention and diversion. And what can youngsters do in center? We can just chill with friends, play pool, table tennis, table football, PlayStation, try our virtual reality, board games, watch movies, cook, uh, use computers, accessories, do homework, listen music, and dance. And now we show you the Electriana Youth Center events and entertainments, how it looks like in the real life when we have summer or when we have to, or we have a time at a real place. So we organize an event like uh, happy or ha <laughs> like a birthdays. We had a second birthday uh, the summer at the summer. Now our, we are organizing events only online like uh, meetings, like uh, uh, other activities. There you can see the uh, movie night also. Uh, we have uh, festivals at the summer on the holiday time. And uh, these festivals are organized uh, with our volunteers and team workers. And then we have a good uh, good team because it's uh, really hard to do the uh, uh, events like that. And that festival in summer was uh, 5,000 people. Yes, it's really big. So there you can see the bicycle uh, tour uh, at the Electriana municipality. Also, we have uh, trips and camps at the summer. We organize trips to the other cities. Uh, there you can see the swimming and kayaks uh, at the river and uh, all, all other our trips. 
uh, we uh, visiting other youth centers and all the Lithuania. This summer we visited Klaipeda and Moleta Youth Center. And uh, as Neryu said at a video before, we have 25, 35 youth visitors every day and about 500 unique uh, people per year. We have training courses. There you can see uh, the virtual training and the, about Instagram using. And uh, about volunteering and summer work. So we have a program for summer workers from uh, general education students. Uh, they can uh, find an employer for himself. And if they need, we can, uh, we can help them to create the CV or, or consult at career consulting. Also uh, about volunteering, we have five volunteers at the time uh, and they are from national volunteering program. And this program continues for six months, 40 hours per month. And this volunteering gives uh, 0 0.25 point to go to university. There you can see the discotheque at the summer. On the winter, we organizing uh, discotheque parties in our main place, you seen at the video before. You can see the video about us who made our uh, volunteers, but uh, this video is at our uh, social media profile and uh, uh, Facebook. And you can follow us. Uh, you can follow us and see the video and more about us. So have you got any questions? Thank you. Thank you. So questions, shouts of anger, reactions? Yeah. So on, on chat, we have quite many people expressing willingness to visit the youth centers, Elektrena and Kupishkis and Ukmerige in the real life when the world will start going again. Mm -hmm. Some people had issues with internet, but uh, I think we you got most, but also during the week, me and Nerius, we can answer most of the questions. We can clarify if there will be a need. Also, Joella was asking about uh, job shadowing opportunities. I think uh, next week after Easter, we'll be talking about international opportunities. So we will cover that question there, but there are ways how you can use Erasmus and the Solidarity Fund and other funding to actually get experience or to bring activities or bring volunteers to your youth center. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay, um, we have a bit of change of flow. So we agreed that Andres will be making his presentation after the break. And now we would have 20 minutes for discussion, answering questions uh, for uh, Ukmerge Youth Center, Paulus from Kupishkis, and also Barbora Aurelia and Asta could answer some of the questions for you right now to just have a conversation about what we have seen, spaces, activities, rooms, finding, uh, yeah, whatever is on your uh, tongue. Marius will be facilitating that part. Um, another short uh, info, so Aurelia and Barbara, please paste the video in the Facebook event uh, with the one which young people have made. Uh, it's also possible to share. And I would also encourage others, Jivila, Dovila, Olia from Lithuania to, um, you can also send photos for me and I could make a short video uh, to make presentations of your uh, organizations and also for the international participants. If you want to share something, our Facebook event is a place for sh to share, to post, uh, and present your organization or institution. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Marius. Yeah, yeah. So I, I wrote on the, on the chat that I'm waiting for your questions and reactions. So yes, Joel, I got a question, and we will cover it a bit later. 
But one question which was already mentioned before about the rules, about the rules in the youth center, how do you set up? How do you, I mean, how you deal if the rules are broken? Especially you know, in the Kumer Geve, we're talking about, you know, bad boys. So, you know, I think we, we, we shouldn't be using those terms, you know, but, but yeah, we know what we're talking about. How do you guys uh, approach the, the rules and do you have any punishment or like, I don't know, rules? Who would like to answer? Uh, in Electronic Youth Center, the big punishment, biggest are to don't let uh, go to the youth center a month. It's a ban for uh, uh, two weeks or a month, depending the criminal who made the visitor. Ooh, don't say criminal, okay? It's a breach <laughs> of rules because now it's criminal. Like, uh, all the bandits are not allowed for two weeks. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so depending on severity of, uh, of what kind of rules were broken, but also it was always a kind of effort to make the rules together with youngsters, because what we know that if they come up with the rules, they are much more likely to follow them, not to push the rules on them. Mm -hmm. Okay, I'm going through questions. Yeah, the question is, how can we cooperate between youth centers now when everything is still in lockdown? Do you see any opportunities to maybe get together, chat together, maybe even connecting youngsters together? Kokos galimibes bender darbauti tarpiunimo centru vizdar ko pandemia. Yes, we are cooperating with Driskininko Youth Center and uh, making uh, meetings together to play Among Us or Mafia card games or just uh, meeting to chat or something. We are communicating to each other. Kupishkis, mm Hukmergia, -hmm. any way to cooperate? Which is cooperate, I guess, uh, best ways to, to the Wukmerge, sending best uh, wishes. Mwah, mwah. <laughs> so, I don't know. Uh, we, ha we, we know a lot of uh, guys from the other youth centers, but now it's very hard pande pandemic time, so I don't know. Mm -hmm. we, we we talk uh, a lot with youth uh, with Zoom, of course. We have social social teams in the in the Facebook. So what we use, they so play Uno. We we try and make tournaments of Uno and the pool. So but you know, after one year in the online, so we the youth just do it. Uh, new stuff and I call it scene <laughs> so no mm -hmm. I think one very important question is because later on today we will be discussing about the first steps of establishing youth center uh, and the question is did you feel the support of the municipality from the beginning when you were trying to establish it yeah so I'm asking this question to to Paulus to Daiva to Electriana guys, you know, did you feel the support of municipality? And in the meanwhile, I will also answer a bit of a question about the kitchen. Yes, it's not really clear, uh, you know, you have to check your own uh, national or local regulations, but it's important to point out that the youth center is not catering, not providing the meals. So they're not cooking for, for you, but they're cooking with young people or they're providing kitchen, uh, appliances so they can cook for themselves. But yeah, it's it's not always very clear, but for young people, they are always hungry and they're very interested in doing something on their own. So yeah, for many youth centers, uh, preparing some kind of food is a, is a nice activity. Now going back, did you feel support from municipality or how you got one? 
Kaip, Daiva, matau, jūs ten pasijungia. Ar jautėt palaikymą savildybės? Ar jūs įsikovojat jį? The biggest support from municipality is, you know, how to say it, it's, it's, uh, they, they let us work without any uh, big interruption. They let us work. They don't know exactly how we uh, need to work. They don't know rules because we're, uh, gui we're guiding from uh, department. So municipality, they care only about um, uh, how much uh, events or festivals or, or uh, disco or camps we made uh, during the year and uh, how does it cost so they don't care uh, a lot about uh, our uh, inside the workshops so they, they just let us us work not no no judge not judges so we are free to to organize our uh, our um, work inside, and uh, our major major of 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 Ukmerge of our city, he is a very uh, funny and uh, social person. So he is um, no. By the way. Uh, Politics, politicians, uh, or, um, de decision makers, uh, they care about the reputation uh, in the next. Um, what is the uh, next uh, term, uh, next mandate? Next term, next. Election. I elections, yeah. They care about the, the future elections, so they communicate uh, <clears throat> with. Uh, uh, seniors with the uh, older people because uh, young people don't don't like to vote mm -hmm. so um, they don't care about our our uh, target group and uh, that's why we are free and uh, and not uh, very we with no no need to uh, to answer a lot of questions because they don't uh, understand clearly prop prop our work. Thank so you, Daiva. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So maybe it sounds a little bit weird, but when politicians mm -hmm. don't intervene with your work, it's already kind of a support. <laughs> and also, you know, we were talking with one youth affairs coordinator in the kind of Vilnius region. So she was saying that municipality allows her to try, but on her own risk. So if something goes wrong, they say, yeah, you are taking this possibility, right? So it's not municipality who did something wrong. So yeah, we still have a little bit of this mentality. Another aspect in quite many rural municipalities, we do have uh, infrastructure and spaces like, you know, theaters, which are not attended anymore and not used as cinemas anymore, the kindergartens. So it's possible to get access to this infrastructure, to use it, to adapt it to youth needs. And also if you manage to get you know, funding and activities, and they get accustomed to this place running. At some point, they also start supporting in, in different ways and also financially. Nerius, you can also explain a bit better when municipality starts funding youth work. Yeah, I don't, uh, just to emphasize, all the free centers which you have seen that are municipally funded. Buildings belong to municipality. Municipality is paying heating, electricity, cleaning, and also the salaries of youth workers. And in Lithuania, if we would look, so out of the 45 youth centers, probably 38 would be municipal youth centers. So which uh, they cover the basic stuff already. So building is theirs, uh, salaries are theirs, and then, um, yeah, heating and other stuff. And what Daiva was saying from Mukmerge in the beginning, you get, have to get money for your activities, for markers, for pens, for equipment, maybe for renovation, maybe for building something. But yeah, someone in the municipality is there, the youth affairs coordinator, maybe a politician, maybe a mayor. So someone is already supporting uh, 
supporting the idea. And uh, tomorrow, the example which we will see, it will be a social business. So there is also other ways how you can fund um, youth centers. So today it's municipal. Uh, Andres example, it's also not municipal. They are an NGO. And tomorrow we'll have this social business company from Lithuania who are, who are doing that. But yeah, it's quite a lot of support. Uh, but as Marius was saying, not intervening is also seen as support in Lithuania. Mm -hmm. Okay, we have a few more questions on, uh, on chat. So one can, I can answer very straightforward. Is it allowed to drink alcohol over 18 inside of youth center? No, because first of all, in Lithuania, if you remember the fucked shit, we can only drink alcohol from 21, but also in general is not really tolerated. Yes, we know that like in Germany and Belgium, they even sell light beers in the youth centers. In Lithuania, that would be counterproductive. And so it's not allowed. And then Leticia's question is about, do we have a maximum number of youngsters which we can allow to enter a youth center a day, a week, or maybe a year? And uh, how do we select youngsters? So very important to, you know, again, rem remind what we were talking yesterday. We're talking about open youth work. So everyone should be allowed to enter. And I think we never had a problem that too many youngsters would like to, to come. So it, especially in the rural places, there, there are not tons and hundreds of, of youngsters. So, but, but also when you look at you know, 500 youngsters, unique youngsters in Electrena, that's quite a lot. Nerius? For Electrena, that's already one third of all the youngsters in the municipality. Now with COVID, we have regulations. It's 10 square meters per person. So schools are closed, services are closed, but youth centers in Lithuania, as they are providing social services, so 15, 10 young people can enter a youth center, and now it's limited. They have to be registered, they have to meet in the same group, they have to meet with the same youth workers. So even now we have an exception with COVID that youth centers are still, still operating, and that's you know this permission to provide social services. So now it's 10. 10 people per square meter, but then uh, it really depends on, on the building. In Electriana, maximum it's 50, what you can host, and then it's too crowded, and then young people are leaving because it's too, it's too crowded. Uh, we have youth centers with 1,000 square um, meters, so probably they can host more, but then the question is how many youth workers you need for that amount of, of, of youngsters. Mm -hmm. But there is also maybe you guys could explain how you split between different types of youngsters. I mean, the older and younger, you were already talking a bit about, you know, this youth bureau, so the most active guys went over there. But in general, how to balance maybe guys and girls, separate groups, or younger and older? What's the practice? I think practitioners can answer how mm -hmm. they are practicing organizing. Practicante? Practicante. So how you divide time, how you organize spaces, activities, on age, on sex. Gender, gender. No sex in the youth center, please. <laughs> Maybe you don't organize, you don't split. It's you who comes, who come, they come. Polo, Daiva, Kipasius. To the center uh, allowed guys from 14 up to 29 years old. Um, in no other way we discriminate who comes okay so, so open you for equally anyone can come yes it doesn't matter if it's a disabled person or i don't know a person from some subculture some particular subculture it doesn't matter mm -hmm. uh, mm -hmm. after we have to uh, collect the data yes we have to put down in uh, different sections how many females came um, what is their age, exact age, and uh, yeah, 
we have to count the data. Mm -hmm. But I think it's also, so in Lithuania, again, it's not so crowded. So we, we never had issue of, you know, need of separating people maybe, but it's very important to take in, in consideration how you start uh, activities of youth center, because if you start with very young ones, so others will say, oh, okay, it's a place for kids. Uh, at some moment, uh, when the priority for youth policy was uh, needs, young people not in education, employment, or training, uh, in the national funding, they had the kind of uh, priority to support those youth centers where 50% or more youngsters who come are from this specific group. But we were actually fighting very much against it because, again, it really depends on what kind of people are gathering together and then they can affect others. So actually, do we want these neat youngsters to integrate with uh, regular kids or other way around? So it's actually quite important how you, what, how you attract different kind of groups and make them feel that this space is you know, meeting different needs of youngsters. Mm -hmm. Paulo, are you said skirinet? Think, but I'm not. We're doing the same because at the moment we don't have a lot of youth, so we can make one one activity in in one time. You know, so mm -hmm. we maybe we can. Um, um, Maybe we can do uh, uh, actives from the uh, from the project, or maybe we are sitting around and we uh, have an idea, go to play volleyball or by the lagoon and something else. So just like ex expound. <laughs> yeah, thank you, Paulus. Again, it's very important uh, when we say that you have you need to have more than one youth worker. And it's not only for safety reasons, but actually to be able to work simultaneously with, with different activities, with different youngsters, with maybe different needs. So again, having a group of youth workers or volunteers can help you with that. Uh, I like the comment of, of Jorgen, and it's also re repetitive in the chat that it really depends on municipality, the continuous support, or if you have assholes in the power, then it becomes difficult. I have to say that even in those municipalities where things and youth centers are working well, from time to time, you need to prove that you're doing well. You need to bring evidences. You need to bring results. You need to talk about it. You cannot take for granted because somehow, you know, youth work is quite often questioned, even if it doesn't cost so much, you have to prove. And what is helping for us would help also Elektrena a lot, would help Sukmerge. You don't ask too much from municipality, but you use international funding opportunities, you use Erasmus, you use national funding schemes. So they see that actually money are coming into municipality, money are coming into activities which are done for, young, for local youngsters. So that's quite important. So before pandemic, uh, we making discos in the youth center. So we're taking money from the tickets uh, and that's the way where, how we get money for the, you know, from the, I don't know, activity from the, to the other activities. So we're making a few hundreds of the euros and we can spend in our free time with the youth. Mm -hmm. Also, Anna is writing in the chat, does it make sense to have young people of different age working on projects together? It does, because I think it's also, uh, at some point we have, I don't know even where to start. Uh, because in Lithuania, when you look at this kind of historic perspective, uh, people wanted to see things happening. So if you are a cultural worker, you need to see people running around and doing theater. If you are a physical teacher, you need to see everyone running. And new centers, something different. It's not only about activity, but it's about safe space where they can come and be. 
So sometimes politicians, sometimes the youth workers who are just, just starting this, they are afraid that, you know, it's too silent and things are not happening. So it's not about that, making everyone busy and running, but it's about really creating the space where I think people can think for themselves what they would like to do and what they would like to join. So having different types of activities or different uh, materials or, or games, table games, whatever, available, and little by little allowing them to experiment and try new things, I think that's uh, the best way how you can get them used to youth stand. I think we're pretty much in the break time. So I would like to thank all our guests and I can wish you, you know, continue the good work which you are doing. Not always, you know, you are appreciated for all these efforts which we're doing, but, but we love you. And also I hope that maybe we can also invite the guys again for networking uh evening or networking uh, moment which we will have because again you already know a little bit about what they do how they work about their towns so maybe you will be interested to to join some international activities with them and uh, the questions which you raised we will still try to answer during this week right Nerius? and the other week so don't don't forget them and we will continue working. And let's have half an hour break and come back at 12 o'clock Central European time. Do we do breaks, breakout rooms? Mm -hmm. So at least to hear three people from our group before we continue, because it was really frontal. And then it, we need to get a bit of feedback uh, how, how it was for you. So who feels like sharing, share. Mm. <laughs> so we see some likes, but some comments, you know, what was interesting, what impressed you, what scared you, what made you cry? Hi. Um, uh, what impressed me the most is the um, uh, the facilities you have, um, and uh, all that rooms prepared for youngsters and so on. Because uh, I don't have it here, and even if I wanted, I had to ask the municipality to build a new <laughs> a new building, and uh, that's really cool because actually youngsters have a place to be where they can be themselves and feel free to stay and do whatever they want. And that's what I, I think I'm missing here mm -hmm. to do a better job with them. Thank you, Anna. Joanna, you are raising your hand. Yes, thank you. Um, I was more than impressed and I almost cried because everything that you showed us is actually what I had in my mind for the last, I don't know, maybe 15 years, but I didn't know that it actually existed and that it actually also has a name. So I found out about the youth centers and so on about three years ago um, during an Erasmus Plus project. And uh, since then I try to, you know, find some more information about this, but now seeing with my own eyes, all of this, it, this, is, this is really true. And this, the fact that you have the support from the municipality is simply mesmerizing for me because I talked with um, a lot of people from my hometown that are, that have been trying for the last more than 10 years to implement something similar. Uh, I'm, I'm not sure if it's like a coincidence or not, but the person that has been doing all of this battle in this hometown uh, has been also uh, inspired by some youth centers in Lithuania. I'm, so I'm not sure if it's like the same or not. Um, but yeah, as I said, so he also had this in, in his mind, but whenever, so the, the, municip the municipality already knows that this is a priority for the youth in our in our area and so on because they there have been some consultations and so on but still they never fund something like this so 
it's it's always that we have to search for some external um, help, and uh, I hope that we will find something in in this project of course but i'm so happy that at least the people from lithuania have such such uh, big support and really um it's it's i'm not sure if you know how blessed you are but i'm telling you you are <laughs> and i'm so happy that the kids are or the the youngsters the teenagers and so on are also blessed to have you so good luck in what you're doing and i hope that we will be able to you know partner up for the future it will be interesting to find out who is the Romanian person. We have met some, we really cooperate quite, uh, quite a lot. But yeah, it's also, I would say, 20 years of hard work for these things to happen. And a lot of people who quit the job in the process because they didn't see, didn't see the result. You know, you saw Daiva today, she is working for eight years. Um, me and Marius were working for more than 15 years, but we are very few. A lot of people really leave after three, four, five years because you know it is really um, fighting windmills. Uh, also, also not easy. But uh, we will also tell next week um, about how the political process went, how advocacy, political documents were made. So also, we'll tell you a bit more this uh, making the policy scene because there were really concrete examples and steps done research was done and other things and then we can we can share another recommendation of mine would be bring your politicians with you together to the study visits training courses if they see with their own eyes might be that you will have a person who can support this idea and push for the idea from inside the municipality that's what we were doing quite a lot of politicians right now are going to youth centers in other places in Lithuania. 10 years ago, we were bringing them to Belgium, Germany, Finland. They were going to see Finland, Germany, the country, but also they were seeing the youth centers. And then if you have it in your mind, it's, if when the idea is clear, it's much easier to implement. Uh -huh. One more comment. Mm -hmm. Who will comment? Who will comment? Let's enjoy the silence together. I will not continue before we hear a third comment. Mm -hmm. yeah, so, uh, I'll, sorry. Okay. I just, so now uh, Aga, Jorgen and Jella. Okay, just wanted to thank you all for, for really inspiring presentation. As it for me, uh, all, all of it is, is really uh, like new, totally new. So it was a nice case study for me, a lot of inspiration and yeah, um, yeah, a lot of inspiration and hope that I can somehow implemented and started working on this field in, in Poland. So thank you all. Okay, Jorgen, to you and then to Jala. It's, it's always very inspiring. I think there's a lot of cool things happening in, in this field in Lithuania. It's always uh, fun to follow. Um, I know there are a lot of good examples in Norway as well, but uh, as you probably know, there is very big differences between municipalities, administrative units, how cooperative and supportive they are, and how how well uh, how well their finances are. Some municipalities are very rich; others are uh, bankrupt and uh, left alone with providing very little service for the inhabitants. So. Um, it's uh, inspiring and I also hope to learn even more about how to successfully establish something that is privately based, mostly. Um, because uh, in our case, I don't think municipal uh, funding is an option at all. So that's why we, we try to look at the, the larger levels of the, of the administrative hierarchy and also on private models. Also to have the independence to not be sabotaged. Cool. So we'll have 
Like next examples will be and will be like like that. Joella and then Marius. Okay. Uh, first, uh, first of all, I have to thank you because it was really, really inspiring, as everybody said. And I will be really pleased to know how to do like kind of a study visit or a job shadowing somewhere there because it will be very, very useful for me and I think also for the youth workers in Italy. Uh, as I uh, kind of studied, but it, it's just mostly not for my being there, but also like watching the websites and the Facebook and stuff. In Italy, we have a kind of a, a three models of uh, youth work, of youth centers. One is that it's just informative. The informative model is lacking of relation and the recreational parts. And actually it's kind of a bureau. It's like the bureau that you have inside your youth center. And then there is like, that is not exactly a youth center, but have a very big part of youth. And it's uh, usually led by the RC, uh, RC Association in Italy. And it's lacking of a educational and informational part because it's mostly a relax, a relaxed place and the recreation. So it's the recreational model. And then there is the third model that is the most, I think, bad part is that uh, lacking totally of freedom of initiative and is really paternalistic is the educative model so it's a place uh, where they help youngsters from disadvantaged families and uh, the activities are mandatory and you have to take the signature when you enter and something that is related to the social um, assistance and there is the after school uh, programs to help them so we are totally lacking something that is open and new, something that you show us. And my biggest question is that how to do this with others? Like I am one person in my region. How can I make something like this alone? How can I gather people like me in my region? Like uh, instead of not like, okay, asking for volunteers from Europe. Yeah, but they come here for six months or 12 months. I need somebody that is working with me here. And this is the first question. And the second question is that, as I see uh, in the, your socioeconomic uh, in uh, Lithuania, you don't really have a lot of uh, foreigners, like um, second generation uh, immigrants. And this is a quite, kind of a problem in our country. I think also in France and Spain, we have the same. Uh, like teenagers and youngsters that are the second generation of uh, immigrants and they are in an in-between culture. So like they don't feel totally 100% Italian. Like they follow, for example, R Ramadan or they, they have the, they, they know something of their language but they don't know it exactly. They cannot understand their parents' habits or uh, like girls don't wanna wear the veil or something like this. So they're feeling like a big, cultural and inner trouble because they don't feel they belong to the culture of their parents but they don't feel they belong to the culture of our country and most of the uh, youth work right now is also lacking of um, this because there are some places where they make youth work but it's for like middle upper class and mm -hmm. white people and when you go instead of working with this population is the educational paternalistic model so they are lacking of everything that is freedom of speech freedom of how to say um the opening of that like just patting them on the on the shoulder like oh, okay we're gonna help you but not just giving them the possibilities to do the things so in these environments you don't find activities and the freedom to express it's just you know help for for um, for homework or help for a drug addiction or something like this so i really would like to have maybe um, one by one you can just write me something because i really want to study this more and uh, bring this model in my country because i found that this model in my country is totally not working and i want to bring your model here mm -hmm. Cool. Um, we will even let you know for more events and what we are doing together with our partners in Italy. Uh, we'll be doing study visits, training courses on that. So Angela, it's really possible, um, possible to do it. 
and also in other countries, for example, in Belgium, in Germany, uh, Denmark, Norway, already these examples with second generation migrants, youth centers are working and quite a big focus is also there set on the second generation of, of migrants. So we can share examples in the future and also part of the questions I can imagine will be answered during the last days or other days of, of our training course. Marius, do you have a comment? Yes, I have a com I always have a comment. So one thing is uh, about, you know, there is already a discussion in the chat going on how to call, how to gather the people around you. So what also worked in Lithuania, start talking about it. Start talking about it, not only when it's finished and established, but even before. You, you will see that some people also have similar ideas, similar wishes and dreams. And then it's a little bit easier because alone you cannot do it. And also as Nevis was pointing out before, so many people left the sector, giving, being fed up of you know banging a head on a wall and so on. So it's not an easy task. But also, just what I wanted to, to tell you that we also invited. It's a new thing on next Thursday. Uh, our Norwegian colleague Paul Sulberg will join, who was a secretary general of Norwegian Youth Center Association. Uh, so it's another way to also to see how youth centers can support themselves and be advocacy tool to push uh, municipalities but also he's preparing youth workers so it will be another opportunity to ask the questions related to youth work and to youth center yeah and i think let's pass the floor now to andres and andres can tell this uh, his non-municipality example so andres the screen is is yours Yes, thank you, Nerius. And uh, it's not only non-municipal uh, point of view, because I've been working in several municipalities and uh, I decided that I will not work there anymore because it's whew. But I respect those who work there. And uh, so our youth, youth center, youth, everything is non-governmental. And I can really connect it uh, to what uh, Marius was saying that you have to talk even before you started. Uh, that's what we did. We just did some projects. We came together some specialists who are working already with uh, young people in different ways, starting from sports, ending with social risk groups and entrepreneurship. And then we did some projects and we, them, we did them really well. And we were talking about these problems and things uh, all the time. And um, then we started getting some sort of um, I cannot say that it's uh, support of municipality. I would rather call it a service because we are not going to them and asking, please give us money. We are doing a great thing because we are uh, collected together. We make it as a good service. We tell them it's that amount of money. You see that it's working. We did a project and it's working and it's necessary. And then they see reason why they should pay money for uh, to us about it. And uh, for now, it has worked very well. But I will go to the presentation. Uh, I will talk about this stuff more tomorrow and other days. Today I will more talk more about the space because what is interesting for us uh, that oops and space municipal huge youth house with two floors with many rooms. We don't have that. It's non governmental organization and days come and go and we're not that it's not that sustainable in in the beginning at least so we can um, get a space and we have these pop uh, youth spaces uh, we take our stuff and we go to another place if uh, we see a better one or uh, there comes a winter and we need a warmer place we pick our pick up our stuff and go to another place and uh, we've been working this way for two years and it's it worked uh, very well. So I'll show you how we did this. Uh, by the way, we are located in Liepaja. It's the third biggest city in Latvia and it's by the sea. It's well, actually the most beautiful city. Okay, it's second biggest, Kuldika. I like Kuldika, it's beautiful. But it's one of the most beautiful cities. It's by the beach, you have everything here. And it's close to Lithuania also. So it's like 100 kilometers and we go to Klaipada and, and, and we go there to Ikea and uh, other places to buy some cheap stuff. 
yeah, we did the trainings, healthy lifestyle, supporting social initiatives. Our youngsters can come to us and with their ideas and we find them money, support, specialist editing, mentoring, and youth involvement also. Um, one of our greatest spaces we had was last summer pop-up uh, youth space in the city port. So it's an old uh, warehouse in the port. It was a storage house, basically one room. They reconstructed the whole building. It was. It is four floors. The third and fourth floor is the gym. So perfect because youngsters come to the gym. First floor is the brewery and cafeteria. So they make beer and food and it's perfect because you also come there. Uh, and we were in the middle, in the second floor, uh, in a space that was around um, 160 square meters. Uh, it was basically a place where they kept all the stuff they don't need, all the dirty things, everything. And um, we talked with the guy who owns it. We talked to him. We said, OK, when we have some money, we can they use thing but we will use it for several months because there was no heating no normal windows in the winter you cannot survive there and we were out from there until um, by october we were already in another space and it was perfect because uh, covid was coming and we don't need a huge space when there's covid um, yes uh, a little bit construction happened uh, we have a nice balcony by the port, so you can sit on the balcony and see Andres, ships coming in, coming out. Yes. Andres, uh, uh, press uh, full screen. Ah, okay. Yeah. So this. Yes. Nice. Yeah. The previous pictures. Uh, so yeah. So uh, as you can see, no normal windows, uh, dirty floor, everything dirty and ugly, but we fixed it. Um, yeah, we had a huge balcony, really nice views. Uh, here is here are some pictures before and after. Uh, youngsters were coming. We were cleaning, doing this stuff. Uh, it took three weeks. In three weeks, of course, in the last three days, just like writing a project, in the last three days and nights, we finished uh, ninety percent of it. For three weeks, we were procrastinating mostly. And um, yeah, this is the main room, as you can see, and also. We spent uh, money wise, we spent, I think, 300 euros at all. We just bought the motivational posters printed and uh, some small things, paint, something like that. The rest of it, uh, we collected. The youngsters brought flowers and some furniture, and someone donated something. So we just gathered stuff all around. Yeah. So this is how it looked like. Like these big posters, the only thing that we bought. <laughs> Yeah, and in the end, we had this, uh, our youth space, we called it, because we're trying to make it uh, similar to our uh, name. Uh, also, uh, later you will see, here you can see a little already, is a picture that was painted by our youngsters from the art school. They, they wanted to, they had some fines for drawing on the building, so we offered them an opportunity to draw here with uh, this, um, how do you call, paint spray, yeah, uh, spray pad. And uh, later, uh, other municipalities, other cities, youth centers, they were calling us and asking, well, who made this? We want to pay the money to come uh, do some workshops or uh, make some paintings. And those guys actually earned some money later. Uh, here's some video on our balcony, how working was there happening, because it's very windy in Lepai all the time. But that's just a few days, not all days. But yeah, uh, let's move to the, no, 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 don't do that. Uh, to the video of opening. I hope it will not be, It uh, my internet is not that good. But this is from opening event. Oh, wait. Yes, now I will share sound also.
uh, yeah, I hope the video you, you could see it because the connection is not that good. And um, so uh, yesterday I was also telling you about the differences in the target group. So this youth space was an open space. So everyone could come a specific time. We were working from 12 o'clock to eight o'clock. We had an EBS volunteer who was uh, there to organize activities, to keep the space open for some youngsters who could who we could trust that they proved they trust uh, they proved that uh, we can trust them with the keys we also sometimes allowed to stay at night with movie evenings or something uh, and, and uh, yes everyone could organize anything they want so it was really open space uh, if you want you can just come uh, sit play your phone or games or something if you want to organize activity you can use the space for that and it was a really, really open space uh, for summer. And next summer we will do another open use space, maybe that same place or maybe some other space. We will just we just get some space, which is like it takes a few weeks to create it, and then then it's good for the summer. Um, then we also had a youth space that was for another target for youngsters who actually wanted to work with the projects, work with the project ideas. Maybe they uh, need space to be in silent with their with themselves. So we also had another youth space that was um, part. We had an agreement with um, co-working space in the city. They gave us their fifth floor. We had an amazing view to the city from the fifth floor, like most amazing view you can get in the city. And then 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 yeah, there we were organizing some. Uh, training courses, uh, workshops, uh, writing projects. When Erasmus deadlines were coming, we were uh, we bought just food. Told youngsters that the whole night we will write the projects. Few days before the deadline, brought some food, music, and then like bunch of also other organizations youngsters. They just came and were writing and helping each other and stuff like that. And it was really an event. Um, yeah, so it looked like that sometimes. So this was more like a professional space. So if you wanted to come here and just sit day all sit all day here and just play games, we told the youngsters, no, this is not the place for you. You should go to this another place we have. Uh, oh, another picture. The same. Okay. So here we were basically working with ideas and stuff like that. Okay, and um, then COVID came. So COVID sucks, of course, and uh, we decided that we don't need a big space where a lot of Youngsters can come and we again we picked up our stuff and we went to another space and we created this consultation center where youngsters can come now because they cannot in Latvia in Lithuania they can come in groups to the youth centers in Latvia it's not allowed all youth centers uh, because in Lepai we also have a municipal youth center youth house but uh, I asked them to make a video and they were too lazy and they didn't do it so same on them uh, but but uh, Yes, all youth centers are closed and only one on one consultations like specialist youngster can do it. So we open the space where are just small rooms where one, two people can sit and consulting these COVID times. We have now some services they can get us uh, consultations of psychologists, uh, consultations for their parents, because sometimes youngsters don't have problems, but their parents have problems. Uh, they can have consultations of uh, a sports specialist, a health specialist for uh, making their uh, diet and everything, uh, mentoring uh, sessions. So, yeah, this is a much smaller space where youngsters can come and can have these consultations while everything is in lockdown. And uh, yes, and we did it through the, through the project and uh, we did it really well. We it up in really nice like some sort of packages and brought it to the municipality and we showed them you see we did this 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 that amount of youngsters were participating we spent that much money we have that kind of results if you want it sustainable in your city for longer term and to help your youngsters you pay this amount of money to us and we can do this of course it was not like one meeting it was like half year till we were talking to several politicians and, and administration workers and everything even organized an event called politician is also a human being where we invited uh, during the whole summer 
every politician, we have 15 in the, in the city, we invited each of them to a very non-formal event. We almost killed the mayor of the city. Because he fell into the lake during the event and then um, with uh, wet clothes, he was sitting with us and cooking sausages and talking to us. Uh, but we really had, even when we had online events, we had a really, really deep connection with each politician. And now if we call them to talk about something, it's not like they're, oh, youth organization, uh, what is that? Who is calling? Now they hear, oh, Andres, hi, how can I help you? What can we do? What kind of meeting or finances or something? And it's really good because uh, in June, we will have municipal election. If it's a June. So it's very important. And we are actually uh, preparing for uh, autumn when we will have, again, this event, because we're planning to every year have these meetings, because if you meet and talk with them all the time, they see that uh, youngsters are really cool people and youngsters see that politicians are really cool people and everything works out. So, uh, yes, and when COVID will end, we already have plans uh, to, we are already found another space for the summer, for the next autumn, we will pack our stuff and go to another place like uh, Little Turtles. Here it is, questions, uh, comments. What is happening with the spaces after you leave? They just stay uh, empty or for example, for previous um, space that we were in the port, uh, they were planning to build, um, I don't know, they were telling me to build something there, but I don't remember what they will build there, but the guy who owns it. And uh, he had a project and uh, it was postponed uh, till the end of uh, the year. And he said, okay, for summer, nothing is happening there. You can take it. And we're like, okay. But he's the, he was telling us, but in October, uh, I will do something here. I was like, Fine, no problem. We, in October, we'll be gone. So he's building something there because he already owns the gym in the fourth and fifth floor and in the first floor, the cafeteria and the brewery. So they just do something. Uh, every time we go away, like, because there's not that much uh, free space in the city, so uh, it's like uh, hot dogs, they, they, people really quickly find them and pick them out. Mm -hmm. I see Anna has a question, please. Uh, yes, thank you for our presentation. It was very good. But I, I have a question about what you're saying of moving the center to another places. So the moving of the center is, is, is really due to, to a climate issue. Uh, you couldn't uh, overcome that with re equipment. So doesn't the change of all the material bring more difficulties to the management of the center? Because for me in Portugal, it, it's, and, and personally, it's, uh, it's completely new having to move the center to another place. So because when I think about the center or school, or whatever, I think, it, okay, it's here and we're yeah. never going to move it. It's strange uh, because, okay, for, for, for me, the climate issue, it's, it's not an issue at all because when it's cold, we, we, we just warm the, 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 the places and when it's warm, we just open the windows. So I, for me, it's, it's very strange. So can you answer me about that? Because it's, it's mind blowing for me, <laughs> really. Uh, the thing is that, um, yes, in Latvia also, not everyone is very, very familiar with this kind of working technique. Because like I said, we have this stationary youth house that is owned by the government. I can honestly tell you, we work better. Uh, and <laughs> but no, if, if I would have a more deep uh, talk about this, I would uh, explain why. But um, yes, there is this stationary youth house. Not that many youngsters go there. Uh, that's a fact by statistics and uh, we understood that um, we don't have that kind of resources to build a huge nice youth house right now there is no space also, also in the city there are like no old buildings that we could really rebuild that we could buy or something and we were like okay so now we have two options if we cannot buy and build or do something with this huge space then we don't have a youth space so we were like, okay, we don't like this option. We need a youth space. And then we were uh, thinking that we can be elastic. We can uh, be flexible to go to the places. We try to build them so uh, 
like when we build this thing, we, we are thinking already forward, like, okay, maybe we can build it in the way that later it's easy to take things and go away. So we're not painting the floors, we just put the carpet on uh, or, or and then we take the carpet and move away. Okay. Yeah. Another place. And uh, mm -hmm. it's just a technique we had and uh, it helps us to be flexible all the time because we're NGO. We don't have uh, these permanent things. Also the finances, like one day you have a project, after a few months, you don't have a project. It's not yeah. like we have a permanent municipal funding. Uh, we have services. Mm -hmm. They pay for specific, we work that, that many hours with specific amount of youngsters and they pay us money for that. If we don't work with them, they don't pay us. So that's why we have to be flexible. We're like the social business. We kind of have to earn money to spend it, but at the same time, we're earning it to do something good. Mm -hmm. But for us, it was also a little bit surprising and shocking, as Anna is saying, because, yeah, you kind of imagine a place, an infrastructure, but actually your center is what's inside. It's what, what is happening, the, the, the connections, the, the relation uh, with youngsters. And actually, I, I like the concept because sometimes, you know, you take things for granted. Politicians say, ah, you know, this youth center was there and it will be there after one year or after two years. The same with youngsters. Sometimes you take it for granted. But in your case, I mean, you have to use it while it lasts because you don't know if it will be, you know, next month. Eh? So to some yeah, yeah, yeah. And we had this uh, urgency. Yes, and we had doubts. And I, even I had doubt, doubts. It's like we opened it in June. We we're like, okay, okay. In September, it's already cold. And it was very freaking cold in September already. And we wanted to do before the September, uh, uh, October term, uh, Erasmus Plus this whole night, and it was very difficult. We had like five heaters to do it, but we did it. And then and, and, uh, uh, it keep you, keeps you sharp all the time because before I was working in this stationary youth house and I had two projects and I thought that I'm very, very busy. Now we have like 20, 25 projects and I think, hmm, maybe we can take another one because this permanent um, uh, stability that we had it kept us kind of a little bit in stagnation, a little bit like calm, but now we have to be flexible all the time. Also comment about Sausage Party. Uh, the event was organized by youngsters. Uh, part of them wanted to buy sausages and they bought sausages. Part of them wanted vegetables, they bought vegetables. I just told them we have 100 euros, spend it for the things that you like. And that's it. And they were discussing by themselves. There were people who were vegans and they said, we want uh, vegetables. We don't want sausages. So they found um, a middle ground between themselves and I just gave them money. That's it. Mm -hmm. Okay. One more question or reaction and we move on. Yeah, potatoes are the best. But it takes quite a long time to cook them, and we didn't have that mm -hmm. long time because mayor was already thirty minutes late because he had a lunch with one of the ministers before. I think people started to talk about sausages and pizza because we are getting hungry. It's not uh, questioning the method of you for, but because you are getting hungry. So I think let let's move on. Andres will be with us for also upcoming days, so there is still chance to actually check out the potential of his way of uh, delivering uh, youth, or youth work provisions in, in town. So maybe it can, it can be fun. But now we would like to, to bring you back and to discuss a little bit what you heard today, you know, different four different examples and try to bring all this knowledge of four days into some kind of practice. So we prepared an activity for you. We will break you in, in a smaller groups, in six smaller groups to be more specific for next 30, 35 minutes. And what you will need to do uh, in those groups actually is to, to make a plan, is to make a plan how to build the youth center. So we shared them. I hope you can see my screen. We shared the in each Jamboard uh, 14 different steps. So what you will have to do in your group is to make some kind of structure, which steps will you take first and how you continue. Uh, 
So you will have to argument to convince each other. You can change colors if you want. You can change sizes of uh, post-its if you want. You can draw in between the different steps of processes if you think that you need it. But the main task in your group, think what should be the right process of establishing a youth center. And then after, after that, we'll come back together. We will not maybe do presentations, but for sure it will be very nice to see all, all the charts, but also we'll try to gather the learning outcomes from this. What are you taking from this exercise from all these different uh, examples we're going through, okay? So if it's okay, I will stop sharing my screen and uh, I will, I think I need a little bit of help or maybe not. I will assign you guys automatically and in each of the breakout rooms, we will drop the link to your Jamboard. Vacant. Yeah, it's people are decreasing, so it, it is vacant. It is vacant. Works. Okay, Nero. So let's paste the links. Okay. Mm -hmm. Let's start from one. Yes. Hello, guys. So, so you can also reflect a bit of what you heard, what surprised you, and please check if you got the link to Jamboard on the chat. Yes. 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 Good. Yes. Good. Okay. Good luck. I'm, I'm uh, it, says yeah. that it, I, it says to me that I cannot access it. I don't know why. Yes, me too. It's it's um it's you need to, to, to give us access to the the temple, it looks like. Okay, okay, wait a second, I will change. Yes, your viewer, my goodness, my mistake. Okay. Check out now. Okay, now it's working. Perfect, thank you guys. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, Sanita was asking for Andre's uh, video, she missed it. So we'll I think share. she will. You, you will share, okay. We'll and when share. can I find the link? We will put on a Facebook event. Okay? okay. Maybe it's not here yet, but we will put it. Please check if you got in the chat the link to Jamboard and can you open it? Jamboard? Uh, was that the one yeah. with profile? Yeah. No, now it's here in the chat. Pink, pink colors, yes. Pink colors. Nice. Perfect. I'm nice. going to other groups to paste it there. Okay, thank you. Good luck. Mm -hmm. But Portugal is amazing. You should. Go. Hi, my dears. Hi. Hello. Portugal. Hello. Portugal is amazing. It is. <laughs> uh, please check the chat if you got the link. To yeah, this. yeah, we yeah, have it. We, we have it and it, it's working. Thanks. Good luck, Bindi. Ateja. Ateja. <laughs> <laughs>
Ka? How many people didn't go to their breakout rooms? Neringa kažkara, šofors mažoras. Ok, ne, tai čia suprantam. Šiaip žmonės įrašė apie foros mažorus, kam su akim blogai, kam šunis, kam dar lygų prasidėjo. Neringai irgi šito negalės. Svarko, neringai dar irgi. Aš taip pabžiau. Yes, because the rooms were closed and they have to come back. So as I informed the group number six and number one presents and uh, others I will comment. Various participants can share screens. Yes, uh, today, today in the morning they were already doing it. Good, 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 good. Super good. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, well done. It was a pleasure to observe the Are host. Only 22 people yet. And it's now... coming, it's coming, it's coming. Yeah. I will have a com comment when uh, the presentations will be finished. Not now? About uh, the last session of the day. Okay. Okay, so it seems everyone is... Oh, more or less everyone is back. Uh, Christian is commenting about gender balance. So you can talk to Zoom, uh, how you call it, uh, because it's Developer. automatic assignment, but let's check. Anyway, gender balance doesn't matter because we are here not to have sex, but to discuss. I hope you agree with me. So... <laughs> Then Maris, everything else, have, everything have, else have, is automatic. <laughs> Maris, you don't know about the others, what their uh, intentions the are. I don't care. Uh, you can do it in a separate room. <laughs> yeah. Okay, guys. Uh, so I hope you had nice discussions. The, the results are quite uh, nice. I would like to invite uh, the group number six to present their results based on my. Um, very democratic decision. Okay, so I can present the work done by our group, group six. So the work went very the, the work went very well. It just discusses the steps to create a youth center. And at, at, at the end of the discussion, we went for um, like uh, uh, the, the creation of a youth center like a, a, gr a growing tree. So it's supposed me to share the screen. No, no, it's here already. Yeah, I can, you Sorry. can share if you want. No, 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 it's not necessary. No, okay. no it's okay. So uh, so we, we kind of are thinking about the growing tree. So the seed are mapping the local reality. So, so it's getting to the field of the community and analyzing the possibility of partnerships and understanding what the community needs. So it's the seed. So when the seed grows in the fertile soil, uh, we get to the next step. So it's getting, uh, gathering a team strong enough that go with you in that boat to create a center. And then we get to choose the right place, getting political support and get funding. So uh, we discussed that getting political support is important, but it's also important not to be depending on it because of the changes of the political stuff. So if you have strong enough connection with the politics and principle with the community, even if the politics changes, the community will demand that the youth center will continue with the same person and the same team. So supporting with political, politi poli poli it's political. Like, um, political, yes. <laughs> political support is important, but not caring dependent. Okay. So the next step, when you already have a small tree growing, uh, it's gathering people to come to youth center and get the equipment uh, sufficient to the activities we are going to to build with the with the kids and the young and hire. Your, so hiring external services like VRs and writing, photography, it's, it's the smallest important thing because it, even the rest functions, 
if the youth are interested in your center, then the rest will come. And then getting, uh, setting up success, uh, get, set, setting indicators and access, it's the feedback to all those things. So it's kind of the water you need to put on the tree to grow. So new leaves and new fruits will come up. There are new youth come to the center, new activities, new funding, new equipments, and you have to do access all the time. You have to set up indicators all the time. So in other ways, you don't know if it's working. Uh, and then deciding to stop youth, youth activities, uh, it's all in because of uh, setting indicators and access. So it's like a growing tree. You have to take care of that. <laughs> Thank you very much. It shows the deep root of our agricultural way of thinking. <laughs> Same in Lithuania, we can always come up with a tree. It was funny when in 2009, uh, European Commission presented this EU strategy. It looked like a tree, we were suspicious. And then we found out that in the communication team, it was Latvian and Lithuanian. So yes, you always end up with a tree. <laughs> Just one thing that uh, when the, we decide to stop youth activities, we just have to come back to the first part. So to understand if youth work is worth and so we come back, it's kind of a, a cycle that this to decide to stop activity, we have to assess the impact and set up the success indicator. Mm -hmm. And then if something is not working, we go back to analyze, maybe not exactly Okay. all this all this the the environment but we analyze the youth center yeah thank you thank you for the comment we can always cut the tree and make a barbecue with sausages <laughs> it always uh, works as well let's go now to the group number one and then we will open a bit more general discussion because for me it's a question why we're setting up success indicators at the very end but okay group number one who would like to speak up on behalf of group number one Should I do it, guys? Or yeah, I don't. I don't uh, like so much being the leader, but it's. I think it has something to do with my inability to to just shut up sometimes. Um, right. So we we spent a lot of time on discussion. It would be nice to make uh, a very creative organizing of this, but we try to like reason for. Is it possible to place them like one by one and what would be our arguments for and against that? Uh, so it's not as interesting to look at as the agricultural inspired uh, <laughs> former one, but we consider this to be natural steps. We discussed again a little bit the political uh, challenges of this, uh, this um, uh, getting funding, getting political support, because sometimes that comes last. Sometimes you only get that when you have proven statistically that it works and that it's a constructive societal uh, uh, thing. Um, anyways, it makes sense to put it quite in the front because you should at least check. Because if you get the support, it's everything uh, a lot easier. Um, we also thought that gathering the team before uh, getting the political support is nice because you know who you are comfortable with establishing something with and work with. And if you let, the, if you just go alone and for some reason the political establishment decides that you, you could do it, they will choose the team for you. And there might be people that are almost impossible to work with. So it's another risk. Um, Choosing the place is also easier if you have support from the community, from the politicians. Maybe they know a place. The more people that are involved in the early process, the more contacts you get, the more good opportunities you will come across, the more ideas. Maybe someone will want to donate equipment or let you use a place for a better price or a better location. Mm -hmm. And um, and uh, of course, it depends. Sometimes it begins with donations. Sometimes you you get the funding, so you don't have to chase the donations at first. Um, yeah, we also discussed how early to involve the youth 
and um, and um, well, I don't think it's a. Sometimes it works if you have a brand new, fresh, cool place that they can just come to and use. But uh, I feel that it's a lot more effective if if they start with an empty, industrial, dirty, disgusting place. And they start thinking about, okay, so this is what we have. What can we do with it? How can we make it ours? Because then they will stand up and defend the club and they will uh, feel it belongs to them. Because if it's not part of their culture, if the club doesn't have a culture itself, the material stuff that it has doesn't matter so much. If it's the family and they love and defend this family and that's in the club, it doesn't matter that much that they maybe don't have any much fun stuff to do there even if your funding is low it's um the material versus the immaterial uh content of a youth club concept so early involvement uh, we think is good i think most of it is quite self-explanatory it's more interesting if people have questions about uh the way we place things mm -hmm. Actually, I would like to ask other groups how you were structuring, what were the arguments, especially if something is different from the first and sixth group, how you were putting things together. I would say that uh, in our group, which was group number four, the situation was pretty much similar, but, oh, I lost it, okay. Um, but what was different was uh, exactly what you said for the other presentation. The um, um, is one second. What was the name? The setting success indicators. Um, this was from our perspective um, to be part of uh, like the the very beginning when when you basically have the team, you know where you would like to have the space and everything, but it's still in the planning phase. So you're not going to um, to to bring the youngsters into your youth center unless you already know what exactly you would like to to do with them and how um, are you going to assess the activities that you are going to have with them. This was more or less our um, main difference between mm -hmm. yeah, what, what's, uh, what has already been presented and uh, to what we discussed. Thank you. Other groups? And um, just to ex explain yeah. briefly the, um, the arrow that comes uh, to, around the assess the impact of youth work activities, it's a continuous activity. And that's why it's not at the end. So it's not before deciding to stop it. <laughs> and that's why we, we just wanted to clarify that it's, it, it's an ongoing process, the assessing the impact. Um, also for the funding, of course, you al always need to have these reports in your agenda and so on, but also for, you know, making sure that you're doing the right thing. Mm -hmm. Thanks a lot, Joanna, for, for your point. It's very important to keep a track of what you are doing and how you're doing and, and what's the impact. And actually, we shouldn't be afraid sometimes to stop it because sometimes we think, oh, maybe everything is going wrong, so that's why we have to stop it. No, but maybe we reached the goal and then we can do something else. Okay, comments from other groups, anyone? Because otherwise, I will pass the floor soon to Nerius to tell the right answer. Huh. Yeah, I can. I can all come. Yeah. And maybe somebody from my group wants to say something. Which number of your group? Mm, two. 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 Um, oh. Nobody. No. 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 I guess we when we were putting it we, we just find out that it can be many ways <laughs> you can first of all research and go to your government and talk okay we have this da, 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 da. you can maybe go before to your government and tell that uh, maybe you can go your own way it's uh, i think it's so many different ways even with the place for example you can uh, you can come to your government and say okay 
see we have a, I, I saw you have this place and nobody's using and it's very trashy and maybe we can take it we're gonna rebuild it we're gonna make it nice or or maybe government can say okay we have this place this is it okay for you so i think it's um it's just one of the million ways how you can walk <laughs> to the to the top of having the center so I guess, um, yeah, <laughs> that's that's all I can say. So we, we can use a random way of uh, putting posters together, right? That's what you're saying. I mean, it's just uh, sometimes it's just differently. Sometimes like uh, I have this, uh, it's not official youth center, but um, we have this in a very, because I live in a very countryside, like I live, we having a, um, Centra, youth Centra in the Quixador is that there's 80,000 people living. Um, but where I live, uh, like exact place where I live, it's four people living in this place and all in the same house. <laughs> it's my house. And the uh, and closest town is only 50 people living. So, I mean, and we having this uh, not official center because we, we see the kids and the young people sitting in the street and okay, okay, I, I'm, I had a little bit experience of teaching and I say, okay, people, let's come and let's do something. Maybe let's play games, maybe whatever. And so it can be, first of all, starting, uh, gathering people, uh, inviting youth, and then talking to a government. Okay, we have, we already built it, but now we need, a, we need a place. And it completely different way can be. It, mm -hmm. it can be. Yes, yeah, so in, in our group, we agree the, the beginner, but in the middle can be different ways. So we put this way, but it can be different if you adopt a, different strategy. Yeah, it's also related to the situation which you have, not necessarily the strategy. Sometimes, yeah, all of a sudden the building pops up or you have a few motivated people with whom you work or you have a bunch of youngsters who you see that with whom you, you, you could potentially work. Sometimes money drops, let's say, and there is a political will to do something with it. So you're right, there could be so many different ways. But I think what is most important is actually start doing it, start pushing towards uh, a youth center or an organization who would be running it. Nerius, how did it start in Electriene? From which point? From getting the money. You see? <laughs> uh, for me, uh, you know what I needed to have? Um, we made this... Uh, so we had the, the idea that we wanted to do, we had the basement where we thought that we will do it. So the municipality, first of all, invested money into this infrastructural design project with um, budget structures, how much they will cost because we had to lower the um, ground, we had to put a ventilation system and so on, etc. Mm -hmm. And it took me four, four years to, to get that thing done from the fourth attempt. So. What you have to understand, anything with infrastructure, it takes time. So if you build from scratch, if you if you renovate, plan that it will take you three years to do it. I want to comment on the Kishadoris Center. Mm -hmm. I think uh, there was another way. It was because all Lithuania have a youth centers and Kishadoris was one of the last ones, like <laughs> they don't have it. So I think, the government was was initiative for that. That okay, we're we're in the end, you know, of the list. We don't have it, so we need to have it. So then they started, and mm -hmm. and that that was completely different. So. We're using a peer pressure a lot, especially if that works with local politicians. And I think that's the same in Lithuania and Portugal and in other countries. You see, if neighbors have it then you cannot really use it an, uh, as an argument. No, no, we, we, we cannot do it. We don't have money or resources. So uh, sometimes we use international examples like, look, you know, they have it in Belgium, they have it in Germany, they have it in UK. We should also have it in Lithuania. Now we can also be as an example to other countries like, look, even this poor bastard Lithuanians have youth centers. And my heart was crying today when Joanna was saying, you know, 
you don't, sometimes you don't understand how blessed you are to live in Lithuania. So yes, we understand and we, and we are happy, but we don't take it for granted. But we have to put an effort to make it happen. But also international cooperation is one of the tools of leverage, how we can motivate and push uh, local politicians. Because at the end of the day, youth work doesn't cost a lot. We will get to that uh, in the next days. Youth work doesn't cost so much. And when you can show how it's working, what kind of benefits it's bringing, my goodness, they are willing to do that investment. Uh, I want to say opposite uh, example from Georgia. Uh, in my region, for example, uh, some centers are established without any support of government. Uh, mm -hmm. And uh, for example, one guy I know, uh, he uh, created youth center in his own garage uh, in the village. And uh, he started to invite uh, all youth there. Uh, in first time, of course, it was hard uh, because um, uh, parents are not trust too much, despite that they lived in one village. But after he invited all parents in the center in his garage at home, uh, they they watch the situation and they realize that this guy is just trying to help the kids and they start to allow him. And even at home, he had a pressure from his family members that. Uh, why are you doing that? Uh, it, they watch him not seriously. Mm -hmm. So, but mm -hmm. he start to work with the youth. He was a teacher at school. Uh, the, he was new teacher at school. He was very young, but he also start to with alternative education at his uh, small center. Then um, after he uh, win some grants from uh, not European Union, but from uh, embassies of countries. Some embassies provide the projects in Georgia. Uh, so government looks that he uh, is very successful and uh, uh, we should support him because he can make a problems in future for us. You know, with that way, like uh, we should be close in aim not uh, have a problems in future with him, uh, not make him opposition to us. So government after that start to help him. Uh, and I know the several uh, youth centers which are totally independent from government uh, and uh, they are create, the, the guys create the centers at home in the garage. I have uh, even interviews uh, about them so it, it okay thank you Elmar, for me out uh, of... your example but what you are pointing is very important is actually to to have the support of the community so that we understand what you are doing why you are doing it and is it for your own sake for your own interest and sometimes politicians what they do they don't trust others so they always think there is a, some kind of uh, reason behind, or maybe you are against us. So it's always very important to explain what you're doing, why you're doing, some if, you, if it's also money involved, what are the sources of the financing and so on. So you, in this way, you, you kind of try to avoid the problems in the future, Jorgen. I think it's extremely interesting to, uh, to listen to people's different realities when dealing with the situation. I think the most brief I can summarize Norway, we don't have the, we don't have the, the benefit of being an underdog mm -hmm. because if you are the underdog, you could say, oh, look, Germany is doing it. We should also do it because it's good. Uh, but, but in Norway, you have this mantra that, that uh, uh, people really believe that it's the best country in the world. So they refuse to listen and believe that something isn't working. And sometimes that, that makes it very hard to get through to the political establishment because they, uh, they, uh, they keep believing that everything is working, it's perfect, we're the best country. And then it's even harder to convince them uh, than when, when you can say that, look at Germany, look at, look at the United Kingdom, what they're doing. So it's, uh, it's strange, but it's fascinating that the realities that we're dealing with are so different. Mm -hmm. 
And not only between the countries, but also inside of the countries. He was in Tennessee, mm -hmm. 60 municipalities, 16 different stories, same in Norway as well. And what is working, not necessarily is working somewhere else. Nerius. Yeah, my reaction would be, so when we think about youth centers, it's very important that it would be sustainable. In Electriene, in three years, I think uh, now it's 10 youth workers have changed, but still the youth center is working. So it's very important to create systems that, you know, it's not only, it doesn't depend on the, on the person. Because what I have seen in my 17 years, like Elmar was saying, there were lots of people who were opening places and garages starting their initiative. But if something happens to them, family conditions are changing, they're changing the country, health issues, problems, then uh, basically uh, it, the place dies away. So what is very important, it can be in any way, it can be non-governmental, it can be private, it can be municipal, but what is important to make it sustainable? Mm -hmm. Yeah, um, I wanted to add about the sustainability, like the money-wise, we discuss in our group how to make it uh, sustainable in uh, an economical way and also in an uh, ecological way. We discuss uh, with, um, sorry, oh, the girl from Portugal, I'm so bad with names, I feel very, very bad. Well, uh, with the, the pulse in my group, we discuss about uh, that there are some ecological uh, association in Portugal and also in Italy and how it's possible to make a youth center that is uh, self-sustained like ecologically with like solar panels and stuff like this or for example economically sustained uh, uh, i put an example that is not a youth center but a social center in my country where they have this um, um workshop where uh, you can fix your bike and uh, for example they teach you how to fix your bike or they fix for you or they rent you some uh, instruments. And this has a cost. They, they are doing this as a voluntary work. They get some money back, but it's not exactly a job. It's like just a refund. But it's a way to have a sustainability, like economically wise. And also, I have been also in other centers in Moldova, where they make uh, uh, art parks, for example, with uh, clay or, for example, with uh, um, like cloth materials, you know, like this art parts that they do in the workshop and they sell like this kind of little shop in the, in the youth place and uh, they can raise some money for the activities. Of course, it's not enough, but uh, how to say, if you're sustained by your society, by, by your community, maybe they can buy what you're doing. They will get the value to what you're doing and not only, you know, putting all your, your effort in you, uh, uh, European Union funds and the political support and this other place support, but, you know, having a big net of uh, support. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Zella. Uh, I think, uh, you know, one, one thing to take in consideration, one youth center cannot meet all the needs. And if you want to make it perfect, you want to make it participatory, you want to make it sustainable, you may want everything, everything, it will take 100 years to make it. So you have to start from something and it's Anna, let's go to you. Maybe to well at the end, uh, <laughs> he said exactly what I wanted to say. Uh, for example, in our, in our case that we are this mixture, mixture between some public and private, um, our sustainable, sustainability is based on um, everything we can do. There's a small amount that comes from the municipality. There's a huge amount we come from all kinds of funds, uh, European and national projects, developing projects, Erasmus Plus, uh, social innovation project, EA grants, and so on. And of course, you can also do um, activities that people can pay for it. Um, another example that we don't have, but I saw in Norway, in a, in a, in a year grants project, I went there, they have rooms to rent. Uh, so that was another way of getting some funds. So I would say that our sustainability not only depends on 
one way, but when we gather every kind of uh, of income, money income that can uh, that we can have. That's all. Yeah, tomorrow we'll spend second session talking about money. So it will be devoted with models, examples, what to plan, how to plan, what is the budget, how much does it cost. So tomorrow we will have the money discussion uh, coming. Mm -hmm. Ladies and gentlemen, break time. Let's go for half an hour break and then we will have a short session to wrap up. We have prepared a homework for you. Uh, one of the steps of establishing a youth center, which is called the social map. So we'll present you a very practical tool and also a very practical manual, how to involve politicians in decision making. So a manual which is focusing on cooperation and involvement. So let's come back in 30 minutes. So at one hour, 15 minutes Central European time for a 40 minute uh, wrap up and closure. And I will tell you also what is waiting for us tomorrow. So tomorrow it's money, 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 money. So enjoy your break. See you soon. <laughs> Can I ask again, is it 30 minutes, half an hour break, right? Yes, 30 okay. minutes break. Mm -hmm. Thank you. And then we will work for 40, 45 minutes more. Uh, Andres, can you open the rooms for coffee? Thank you. And ventilation, please. We have Victoria, who is an award winner, the social entrepreneur, and she will tell how she is getting money from municipalities. So, uh, as we said, uh, we have prepared a homework task for you. Homework in this training course we really see as something um, non-formal or something additional that can help you to um, afterwards establish a youth center. So, making a social map. Uh, so one of the 14 steps which you were designing today, um, social map is a method to analyze how the life in the community looks like. So um, on the Facebook event, there is already the homework task of the social map. There is the link for uh, the Google Jamboard. So this is an individual task. So if you want to do it, you can copy it to yourself and you can try to map your community and to see what are the needs with whom it's possible to cooperate and what is possible what is possible to do so on the left side of the screen you see the task with questions for reflections what to analyze so first thing is the infrastructure so what does it exist what it's possible to do organizations, institutions with whom it's possible to cooperate, who can be your competitors and how and when to organize activities, when activities are missing the most, and then see gray areas. So areas where things are happening, areas where you can uh, find uh, cigarette packs, empty alcohol bottle, used condoms, and other stuff. So where young people are doing something in the night, in the evening, or uh, when they hide and adults do not, do not see it. I also posted a picture example. Um, so this is one of the communities in Elektrene, uh, one of the small towns of uh, maybe even big villages, Ketavishkes, Noyos uh, Ketavishkes, where we provide mobile youth work services. And here are some hints uh, with post-its. Uh, so what we did, we uh, made the print screen of Google Maps of this, small big small town big village and then would post it to comment for yourself what is possible and how it's possible to do so we would encourage you to analyze your local community to see where is the potential for youth center if there is if there is such such a thing um, last week i was doing a national training course with mobile youth workers so i still see after uh, 
nine days that people are continuing doing that task in different communities and mapping how things uh, things are looking, sharing, discussing, and analyzing. So it's a very powerful exercise. You can do it alone now for homework, but then you also can do it together with young people and young people can provide information. Uh, and in one of the projects and programs which we implement with Marius called the Active Citizens, uh, we do this exercise once per year, bringing young people and politicians together. So there is a council meeting and after the council meeting, politicians come for two hours and then they together with young people draw community maps, social maps of their small town villages. And then the politician and the young people can talk with each other. So as Andres was saying, young people understand that politicians are also cool. And for politicians, they get a lot of information what is missing. So if you don't walk on a certain road in the evening, or if you work in one town and live in another town, you do not see certain things. And a social map is a tool how to introduce these things to politicians, to decision makers, and also to, to young people. Um, and for you as youth workers or municipality workers, it also can give you a lot of um, valuable information. For example, where it's possible to get drugs, uh, where young people are meeting for uh, drinking parties. So, so really to see what is, the, what is the situation, what is the safety situation and so on, and so on, etc. So sometimes uh, you can have a chance to see how the same things are seen by different uh, different groups of, of, of people. So yeah, so this is the social map. Another thing which we want to present, so me and Marius, we work a lot on the topic of cross-sectorial cooperation. So we have designed, we did research, we uh, made publications, and one of the publications is Manual on Cross-Sectorial Cooperation. 100 pages, half of it is theory, the other half of it is method. So social map, is one of the methods in this book. And uh, this method, portrait of young person, that's what we were doing uh, yesterday in groups when you were talking about uh, youth needs, expectations of the society. It's also a method from this, from this publication. So I also posted the link into the Facebook account so handbook on cross-sectorial cooperation, how different sectors, NGO, public sector and business sector can cooperate, how to find common grounds, how to see how we can help each other, how to convince politicians. So a lot of practical recommendations um, answering Julieta's question about cooperation with, um, with politicians. Yeah. So additional read and additional task for you to do. For the Lithuanian participants, there is a, a, a bigger even version in Lithuanian language in the uh, uh, Department of Youth Affairs webpage, in Yotarde webpage. And for Latvians, we also have a Latvian version of this um, publication translated, um, if you will need that. We also, have Norwegian. we also have Norwegian version. Yeah. What um, Maybe something to add. Um, don't think that we are polyglotty. We, we have partner organizations and colleagues who are translating, you know, translating things. Okay, ladies and gentlemen. So that's the task. That's the homework. Homework is optional. So manage your own time. And for us, it would be nice to hear how this day went for you. Uh, maybe we can split into three groups to talk in smaller groups. Marius, what do you think? Mm -hmm. Okay, let's uh, poke Andres. Mr. Moving Youth Center. Okay, we will split uh, us into three breakout rooms for a conversation. And then Andres will be also somewhere joining a room.
I shared the link to Emmanuel also on the chat here. Mm -hmm. I cannot understand in which room Andres is. It's still quite a lot of us. Jivilan and Andres. Okay, Andres. I'm and here. Mars. Andres, we are doing reflection groups. Uh, uh, already? So already, yeah. We will just split and then you talk to people how the day was for them. Yeah, 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 yeah. It's okay. Just. Uh internet company called and I have a opportunity to call them bastards because the internet is slow. So I have to use this opportunity for one minute. Okay. Oof, Marius, can you move to room number one? I will take room number two. Andres will stay in room number three. Okay. To number one? Yes, you one, me two, uh, Andres three. Please join breakout rooms. Hello, people. Oh, I think we are, I mean, if you don't have the birds in the background, you can turn on also your sound. <laughs> How are you doing? I would like to start this. I will have to quickly run away. Um, I'm quite annoyed because there's a lot of distractions today and I have a lot of background noise today. I don't know what's happening, but I'm feeling like it's a full moon because usually on a full moon, it's like that. So yeah, it's really annoying. Uh, and I hope that tomorrow will be a calmer day. Um, otherwise, like... Um, uh, evaluating the, the content of today, it was really interesting. Uh, some of the presentations and the videos and the sites I saw were like, wow, I'm so envious, I'm so jealous. Like I would like to have a space like that, uh, so much space, so such a cool space. So yeah, it was really inspiring. Um, yeah, so uh, in my heart and like in, in general, I have a very big, uh, Thanks uh, for all of the teams and for workers who did that and who presented uh, for us. And uh, even though it's like I said, a distracting and annoying day, uh, I'm really waiting for tomorrow. Thank you. And in general, you are fine with the process, with the flow? Yeah, yeah. Like, um, if not those distractions, I would be very happy because, like, mm -hmm. uh, in one discussion, uh, I had to participate only partly because then suddenly I had to leave because it was impossible to actually talk. Uh, the noise was so high. <laughs> uh, yeah, so other than that, it's okay, yeah. Uh, I like that uh, we have lots of uh, group discussions and it's always interactive and we are all included and in participating. Yeah, and the context is also very good. We don't have a lot of theoretical material, so that's also very rewarding. Mm -hmm. oh. oh, thank you. Thanks. Thank you, Ola. Who would like to continue? Yes, go. Go, Victoria. <laughs> so I really like using the raise your hand option here. <laughs> I feel like I'm in school again. So um, about the day, um, I wasn't really able to fully concentrate today because I had a lot of unplanned work in the office and stuff like that. But um, for the parts that I was present and uh, listening, uh, it was really meaningful for me today because mm, we started, uh, especially the group discussion, when we were um, mapping out the different stages of building the youth center. It was very helpful and I think... Uh, Gennaro was um, sharing with us a lot of personal experiences and it was very, very helpful. And uh, again, as, as I said yesterday, I just yesterday started to realize how big of a challenge building a youth center is. And today um, I finally started understanding the, the steps and um, stuff that uh, we need to do and plan and have whole idea and it was really helpful for me today. Cool, and, thanks a lot. And yeah, seeing the videos and the, the youth centers, it was 
really amazing because I want that too, <laughs> really hard. I want it. And I think, you know, the good thing is, uh, you know, we're talking about is building a youth center. Most of the youth centers were not built. So it already existed, you know? So, yeah, just really kind of adapting, connecting. Cool, thank you, Victor. Gennaro, I'm now really curious what kind of uh, personal uh, examples you shared. I hope it was linked to youth work yeah. and youth center. I shared uh, two different examples. One of the one, uh, one connected with the municipality and one made um, private, let's say. Private, I mean, by the associations in the in uh, how to establish the youth center so it's more mm -hmm. the it's more how to establish it than how to build it let's say mm -hmm. but um yeah i mean we became more practical today let's say we are going into the practical stuff of the thing and so thanks to the name of the project itself we feel more involved when it's practical now like we want to talk about the money how to put the things inside because we want to do the youth center and this is all the things that we need basically and uh, yeah, so I think it's going in the good direction like we expected in the beginning. Even of course, uh, I will always repeat uh, being in person would be so much better that uh, I mean to visit those youth centers for real and not just uh, in the video would be amazing. But okay, I mean, last time I was in Lithuania, first and no, I know I've been two times in Lithuania, but this time, this last time I had pneumonia, if you remember. Of course. Before COVID, it's before COVID. So thank God it was before COVID. Otherwise, oof, I don't, I don't want to even go and think about it. And um, so, so I mean, I was looking forward to come back to also to a repentance to myself. You know, like uh, Gennaro was sick of Lithuania, sick no, of Lithuania, and we made a study visit to a local hospital. But three days before Lithuania, I was in Portugal and it was 34 <laughs> degrees in Portugal and uh, eight degrees in Lithuania. That's the thing, I think. Not okay. the being. Uh, okay. <laughs> yeah, thank you. Grazie. Yeah. Okay, I want you to listen to this girl with the jug. <laughs> <laughs> I love children. <laughs> yep, who would like to continue? Well, I can. Talk about so not about today, but all the days. I wake up very early, but I'm really enjoying. I'm learning a lot. I'm very impressed about all these things. I was talking with my mother. Oh my God, the words have a lot of different good things, you know. So this is very good, and I hope I can do something like this in my region. The, I live in Portugal, um, so I'm very excited, and it's not boring. At least we pass four hours together, uh, but it's not boring. So it's a really good job. Congratulations on the organization because yes, it's very interesting, and saw the people, the experience, and uh, build the things together. I, I really like as well. And saw so the 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 videos and the explanation about the other youth center. It's it's really good to imagine because after that we can think about how we can do. And this is very nice. It's the first thing for you, you do the same. The, have a line to to follow. So this is is really nice. And I like it a lot. Thank you very much. Thanks a lot. And thank you for telling your mother what you are doing. That's very very important. Sometimes mm -hmm. we think like, yeah, let's write a press release. Let's go on television to tell what we're doing. No, tell to our closest environment what, what kind of nice things we do and where we participate. Thank you, Letizia. Jorgen, you were raising hand. Yeah, I thought I'll just get done with it. Um, well, on the, on the negative side, uh, I've had a lot of trouble with the internet today. So for like half the day, I almost didn't hear anything. I guess it's a local problem. Other than that, uh, it's uh, some local kids uh, here on an Easter egg hunt. And uh, that's making a bit of noise, but it's nice. I'm a little bit annoyed with my, uh, my colleagues who are suddenly extremely shy. They should uh, be more present. But I'm thankful that they're taking care of the construction stuff and the egg hunt and all that and just leave me to do this. 
uh, it's been very informative. It's very inspiring to see this uh, this um, um, uh, various youth centers and how they do things. It's really very interesting for me because I couldn't hear much for large parts of the day. Uh, I overcompensated in the chat, which was fun. Had a lot of interesting conversations with people about real stuff, real getting to the action, you know. So it was a very good day for me. I'm happy. Thank you, Jorgen. I was laughing today in the morning in the presentations about you know, Lithuanian youth workers English, but at least they have this wooden humor, you know, to address it. So it, it was fine. <laughs> it's just very charming. <laughs> <laughs> very good. And then with young people, you know, they commit a little bit of crime and we go to corner and cry. Very good. It always works. Um, for me, you know, I really like playing with accents. So, you know, speaking Russian with Caucasian accent, speaking English with Russian accent, it, it makes life beautiful. Good. Who would like to continue? Joanna, I think you like to continue because now you're writing me this personal message. You said, I look like this one guy from this one movie. I don't know. I have to watch if I like it. <laughs> whenever whenever I, I see someone, I usually I don't know why I'm, but I'm making a connection with another face and I cannot simply keep it to myself. I have to say it out loud. Like, do you know that you look like that person? <laughs> Especially if it's a celebrity, of course. If it's a childhood friend, then I would not say it out loud, but yeah. Um, I loved it. Uh, I love the whole project. I'm totally impressed by by the participants especially because usually in youth in Erasmus Plus youth exchanges training courses whatever um, the participants it's not about their willingness to participate but it's about their knowledge their background usually there are also like people you know not not experts and I love the fact that everyone here is so uh, into the topic uh, both from the um, um, interest but also from the um, yeah from the experience perspective and um, I think it's very important this aspect especially when we are working in groups um, because it's one thing to talk about what um, your idea is like um, I don't know how you can imagine it and it's another thing to talk from experience either from personal one or from you know friends or whatever um, yeah and the the organization of the activities are really good to the um, um i don't know like the categories now we are working together now it's a presentation now it's a video i think it's really really good um the flow is fluent <laughs> so i really liked it today no no bad comments at all um and i'm really happy that like when i heard in the first time uh, that we are not going to lithuania anymore but we are doing it online i was like no i'm not participating anymore i'm not it's going to be for sure a waste of time but I'm totally impressed <laughs> and I'm so happy I didn't quit because <laughs> I'm the only Romanian that is left I, as far as I know, so I'm happy. Um, yeah, thank you for today. And I have an impression that tomorrow is going to be even more. Pff. So yeah, looking forward to, to tomorrow. Multu, multu mask. Thanks a lot. It's really nice to hear. Also, you know, one of the, some of the comments which I got uh, from my Facebook and uh, Instagram stories that it looks kind of cute and I think uh, we're really happy and uh, we're really thankful to you guys that you know you, we're trying to create this atmosphere but I mean it's, it's common product and process so it's really nice that everyone is engaged and you know contributes and in a ways which we can so, perfect Joanna how are you hello everyone um uh i want to share with you how i'm feeling right now because as you know i'm very little 18 years old and i don't have much experience as the other ones um but i'm glad that i have the chance to be here with you to share and to um to to experience all these things that are happening here, to uh, to hear what, uh, the, as you want to say, the experts say. So uh, it's very interesting for me. And today uh, I like it a lot because there is a lot of examples you are 
real examples, the, uh, these, those videos are just um, wonderful, uh, especially your, uh, your youth work center. I was amazed, uh, actually amazed how you could do this, all these things in this huge building. Uh, for me, for me, it's amazing. And um, uh, I wanted to ask one thing about the task that you gave us. Um, it, is, it is an obligation to do it until tomorrow or we could um, work in the weekend or something like that. It's, first of all, it's not obligatory. But I think it's really nice too. Uh, so you can start thinking about it. You don't have to do it by tomorrow. But actually, especially if you would involve a couple of friends doing that, that could be a really nice building block in the preparation of anything. Because it is really amazing. Because some, you know, we, what we see, what we think, we take it for granted. We think that everybody else see and feel the same, which is totally not true. So when you gather different people, even if you, you know, sit in the same class for 10, 12 years, they would have completely different notions about stuff. So this helps to bring kind of noses together and look at how the reality around us yes, is. Yes. Like. So do what works for you whenever it works, okay? But it's, okay. Really, guys, it's really not a fake exercise, which we do for the doing sake. You know, this one hey, can be I'll really help. I want to say something to Yona. Yona, don't worry a lot about age. Come on, every time you talk about your age, doesn't matter. We don't know about how, how old are you, you know? You are more than the other people. The other people don't care about your age. Don't worry about this. Thank this you, thank is, you. It's not about age. Come on, you can be young or you can be old. And this is the, the most important thing is in your mind. You can contribute. Heart. You can contribute with uh, the experience you have. In this is different of me and Marius and Yoga and everybody's here. And it's important for us. As uh, other point of view, this is very very good for you understand uh, young people as well. So. Don't worry about age. Don't, don't think about this. Thank you. you know? Thank you, you Leticia. You have a good contribution for us. So you are important for us. It's very good you are here, independent of your age. So don't think more about this, okay? You thank are you. Thank you. I already you have contributes for us. So it doesn't matter yeah, how, like how old are you. Yeah, it's really nice to see this, uh, you know, kind of support group. That's what the reflection group should be, you know, kind of support group. But I really know where Joanna's uh, comments are coming from, because in this part of the world, especially young girls, they feel a lot of pressure to perform well, to be perfect. So age is seen like, ah, you know, it's also kind of excuse, but, you know, I don't have this, uh, this experience, but I want to participate. No. All the experiences here are most important. And actually, you have something what I, for example, don't already have. I'm not a young person. So you are an expert of what does it mean to be young and what really young people want nowadays. So you are very, very valuable. Stay with us, <laughs> Jorgen. <laughs> I, I support the message. And I really appreciate that the group is diverse. It would be so boring if it was just old youth workers in this group. It would be terrible. <laughs> that would be uh, terrible. I can only agree. Yeah. And, they would uh, uh, drink beer, talk all bullshit from 70s and play ukulele, which is crap. Yes. Yes. <laughs> Blah. And, uh, and uh, part of the thing is that everybody in here is an expert because only they have lived their own life. So everybody in here has something to teach to everybody else. And everybody here can learn something from everybody else because they only live their own life so uh, it's great to have such a, a diverse group with people from NGOs people who are maybe just thinking about this people who are doing it and I think the only qualification is that we're we're here because we're motivated about this topic that's more than enough yeah thank you Mattia now you have to make something even more personal even more emotional <laughs> 
<ride> no, Le, Letizia eh, nel verbo di Martin Luther King. <ride> uh, no, I, I, I'm very happy to, to share with you all my ideas that are similar to yours because um, we have the same, the same of my tablet. It's, it's near to be held. Yeah. One moment, I put in charge. Yeah, it's about time to get connected. Yes, Matthias. <laughs> <laughs> okay. okay. I, I mean, and um, because because we have the um, a similar idea, ideas to to help young, help ourselves, and um, uh, similar idea to the um, to to be sociable uh, among us, and the course this this course is. Um, it's organized in a very well way uh, because there are a lot of activities, a lot of small group activities, and then um, big uh, group um, talking about what we think, about what uh, what we have done. And for me, it's, um, it's a very useful thing. Um, do this comparison uh, um, to different countries, different people, and, uh, and this. Thanks a lot. There is no one of the strange side effects of all this uh, Corona shit that we see that most of the people English it became very broken because most of us got stuck to our kind of national realities. And you can really see that, you know, for people started to struggle. So even our partners, like, you know, Paul or others with whom we worked for many years, it's like, hmm, you started to sound a little bit strange. <laughs> even the structure of sentences has changed. So, you know, I think also it's a great opportunity to have this international meetings. And I'm very happy that everyone is feeling quite free to communicate, to speak up. Maybe not everybody in the bigger group, but at least in a smaller group that we can hear everyone. Is there anything else we could do? You know, what would be your recommendation for upcoming days or your wish or maybe your proposal? I would have a kind request, uh, so to say, uh, if it's possible. I know that in Lithuania especially, but also in other countries, you have so much support from the municipality. But especially tomorrow, maybe we could focus also a little bit more on um, how we could do this more or less on our own. So <laughs> to do it outside of the this um, municipality world um, and maybe... I know that there is this possibility to, to have the EU funding, but maybe let's see how we can do it as also social entrepreneurship or whatever. But uh, I'm, I'm curious also about this, uh, this aspect. What um, we, we, at, we had at some point an example from Georgia, and I think that was really um, useful. I would have liked also to have these type of uh, examples as well, some um, um, mm -hmm. private youth exchange, uh, youth uh, centers. Sorry. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It's very strange to be locked in the room and to participate in the international activity. My goodness. I'm just happy, you know, uh, I'm uh, participating from, from the office. And, you know, it's a big uh, co-working space with different smaller rooms. So I'm, you know, every day I'm changing to kind of another room. Thanks, good to have a good insulation, <laughs> sound insulation. But yeah, I mean, we, we kind of have to accept this new reality, the sounds around, the smells around sometimes. <laughs> That's how it is. But also, uh, I'm not sure if I did it already, but I share the link to, I know, not here. Uh, but it, in our, as an institute uh, of policy research and analysis, which I represent, and Nerius Cultural Center, we do really a lot of international activities. 
So we will share the links to our Facebook profiles because we put all the events under Facebook events. So you could see what is happening. And if you can cap amazing, if you can also in the future recommend to your you know, colleagues or maybe local politicians or other NGO guys to participate in those courses, that could really benefit them and us as well. Because what we see with this youth work, youth participation, it's a small bubble of people who believe and, and see the need, but also we need to kind of bring more people, bring uh, and understanding into institutions. So that's why we also try to bring as many guys from local administration, from municipalities, from ministries into youth training courses so that they can see the young people, so they can see that, you know, how it benefits them and why we should create youth opportunities in Romania, Bulgaria, or in well-established countries like Norway, because not necessarily everyone has the same opportunities, what we need, or the kind of- Marius. Yeah, Maria. I have a question, but um, uh, in Lithuania, uh, you have a lot of youth center. Um, so the, um, there is, for example, the government have established a part of the um, resources of the recovery fund in, uh, um, in project for um, young centers? We will talk about money tomorrow, okay? Because there are so many different ways, but in most of the cases that first you have to start something and then they, they never give money. They, they can cover, for example, two workers, they can cover your maintenance bills. Often it's not like, you know, here's the money, what would you like to do with it? Never happened before. Maybe we can okay. wish for it. But yeah, but tomorrow really we'll discuss different, different ways to actually to understand what costs. And it really helps to understand that youth work or youth center doesn't cost that much. If you only have, let's say two people working part-time, Actually, it's not that big uh, expense we're talking about. So for me, it's also, you know, a bit still strange to hear that in Ukmerge, they have 13 workers and others, they have nine workers. It was not the case before. But again, it also shows that we're working in a quite cross-sectorial way. You get a little bit of funding from local level, a little bit of funding from national level. Again, then European programs and opportunities. So. You have to be quite active and you look for opportunities and kind of connect them in, in one place. But money will talk tomorrow, okay? So anything else? Last gossips or remarks? If not, I will allow you to go enjoy the evening. It's really a pleasure to work with you and some, somehow it's uh, happening even better than we expected or what we were afraid of. So, so thanks a lot and see you tomorrow. Okay. Ciao, ciao. Bye bye. Until ciao. tomorrow. Bye. Bye. Greetings to your mother, Letizia. Thanks. <laughs> <laughs> well.